yeah, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome into round 10 of the 2024 Moto Options Supercross Championship live here on Star Your Systems TV. Kellen Brower alongside Andrew Wood. It's Indy. It's Triple Crown. Oh, baby, it's so good to be back. I'm, I'm so excited. Uh, Triple Crown, I mean, get some really, really good racing all night and they're always fun and we get to start off with LCQs too, which is our favorite race of the night. So I'm excited for this and it's going to be fun for sure. We definitely do get to start off with LCQs, which is always a fun one. Um, but obviously this is also a chance to see who is our fastest qualifiers every week because this is only 18 guys going into the night show. So why don't we go ahead and pull up our qualifying times now as I uh, continue to talk about them. Um, taking a look at them on our screen here real quick. I did get a refresh just a moment ago, so I think these are pretty accurate. But man, Awood, Braden Castellaneta, fastest qualifier. The 22 machine coming off his Daytona win a couple weeks back is looking fired up still. Yeah, I mean, and by four tenths, which is crazy. There's got to be something big he's doing, uh, you know, a little bit different to gain that much time with uh, how stacked this field is. You don't normally see someone beating Braden Carter and by that amount. So going to be interesting to see if he comes out swinging in the first uh, main event of the night. Whoops. Oh, hey there. Look at how handsome that guy is. <laughs> um, but so, yeah, Braden Carter there, Colby Eaglin, and no sign up front of uh, at least in the top eight of Alexis Leclerc. Yeah, Alexis Leclerc not looking like he's gotten off to a hot start tonight. Or is he even not here? Even. Not even here. Oh, well, very or dead maybe last. Maybe sneaking a lap time in. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we need LCQ. to. Maybe we do need to get a a, a refresh here. But um, <clears throat> yeah, cool to see Castaneda up top. Yeah, even on a refresh, no Leclerc in. So it looks like 18th place right now. Evan Vanderkoy just snuck in in this 450 class. Chase Blakely, Spencer Turley, Bob Joe, and the others might be headed to that. LCQ, so very interesting dynamic there. 250 Supercross East, Rasmus Balzer, Johnny Padani, Seth Carr, separated by, what was that, 24 thousands? Hundreds yep, of a 24, second? 24 thousands, 2.4 hundreds. Two, or was, yeah. And a tie. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So it's uh, it's tight at the top of the sheets there between Boy. Balzer, Padani, and Carr for sure. Yeah, I mean, I don't really have anyone to, to call that I, I would even be leaning towards. You know, sometimes... Uh, I would keep an eye on them over the rest of the field. We do see Holyhead back, which is good to see him qualifying in fifth place. But um, when Pardalo, you know, and Twalik, we see down there, uh, Vanderbeek as well, are like a second off the pace. It kind of makes you keep an eye on those three and feel like those are the three that realistically have a chance to win tonight. Um, but not too much time on the track. Qualifier, maybe you don't, you know, you were nervous for the Triple Crown to get in um, and didn't get to put your best lap time in. So we'll have to see kind of what happens with these guys. Um, and see if someone else can get off to a good start. But right now, yeah, those three are showing that they're kind of the class of the field tonight. Yeah, no question about it. Good to see uh, that it's still tight and close at the top of the field, no matter uh, which way you slice it. Um, let's take a look at our standings going into tonight, because, of course, this is a triple crown, so things will be a little bit kind of skewed coming into tonight as well with Braden Carter, 47 points up on Colby Eaglin, 53 points up on Alexis Leclerc. Uh, just after his win last week again in Birmingham, I feel like we're at the point now with Braden where it's not a matter of of if he wins this title, it's a matter of when. Yeah, I mean, he would he would like to get it done with uh, two races to go, and it looks like he's definitely, uh, you know, he's only a couple points away from doing that. So would be uh, we'll have to see if he can make it happen earlier, but he's got to keep knocking off wins and doing what he does. But I really don't don't see it too much. I feel like right now he's just seeing how early he can do it. Maybe he can mess around on a two stroke for the last couple of rounds or do something, you know, something to, to change it up and kind of make it more fun for him. But yeah, it looks like he'll clinch it two rounds early at this pace. Yeah. Uh, that is going to be fun to watch Carter's quest for four, uh, to bring it down to the end of the championship in this East championship though. Boy, is it a mixed bag? Seth Carr, uh, gets his first win of the season last week at Birmingham. One point up on Balzer. But look, Twalik, Vanderbeek, they both had some sort of good rounds, I feel like, at uh, Birmingham. They're not out of this thing either. I feel like you can't count them out yet. No, I, I realistically think that, that uh, yeah, Twalik and Vanderbeek, within 20, anything can happen. You know, you, we've seen people miss the main events and stuff like that. So, yeah, Carr and Balzer definitely trying to kind of push themselves away from the field, but keep an eye out for one bad night. Uh, the only thing is with the Triple Crown, it does normally lend the racers to be able to have one bad main event out of the three and still finish overall in points for the night pretty well. So um, 
you know, you're not losing too much with a two twelve two. Yeah. Um, if you just really went out there and, and dropped a twelfth place, so, um, yeah, it keeps it tight in points, and we don't really see too big of shakeups with the triple crown, but sometimes you will see a surprise winner. Yeah, that's going to be uh, fun to watch here tonight in this 250 East Championship as well. Here's a quick look at the track, but we also want to give uh, a quick notice. Later on in the stream, as we get more people funneling in, we are going to be doing a giveaway here tonight. So Moto Option giveaway includes uh, a t-shirt, a trucker hat, a keychain, and a sticker pack, all courtesy of Moto Option, our title sponsor of the series here for Moto Option Supercross. So shout out to them. I'll let you guys know a little bit later on how you enter that because it's going to be a little bit of a fun way to do it here tonight as opposed to just an entry raffle. Um, going to be kind of a luck-based one, I think, a little bit. So going to be fun, and uh, we'll give away all that stuff here in a little bit. So shout out to Moto Option as well for that giveaway. All right, let's get back to our live screen and get into the server because things are going to be heating up here in just a minute as we uh, get ready to load in. But Andrew, here's a look at this track here tonight in Indianapolis, overhead view. Um, one thing that someone pointed out is we only have one bowl corner, well, kind of two, but really one true 180 bowl turn. And uh, as I go ahead and show us around this track a little bit, why don't you talk about what you're seeing out here? Yeah, of course. Uh, normally not having a lot of 180 bowl turns isn't really great for racing, but I did watch your hot lap earlier. Um, and it does look like there's a lot of different rhythm lane options and that we might see guys mixing it up. Um, a lot of rhythms as well, some kind of weird turning stuff. So right here, this triple or double double into the Supercross triple. Um, not going to be too crazy, but then we got a couple options. You'll see people going inside, outside, over, all that stuff. And uh, inside and outside's kind of where they can dictate what's going to change and what rhythm, big rhythms you can hit in these long rhythm sections uh, do actually kind of work out well. If you go inside double or outside triple, um, it allows people to cut the line off on others. Um, and kind of make some passes. So uh, 90 degree corner into a long rhythm is actually not that bad. And then we do have some jumper whoops tonight. Uh, it's kind of what I noticed. They look like they're built a little bit differently, uh, maybe a little bit more room in between. I'm sure you'll still see some guys skimming that are comfortable with that, but jumpers as well. You can go inside option here, or you can um, go outside triple over. And then the sand section looks very interesting. A lot of ruts already, a little inside and outside here. Um, that kind of dictate where you're going in this first rhythm section um, and what you can do. So I do think we'll see a lot of uh, option lines from these guys, even though the track uh, looks, if you kind of had a peek of it from the overhead, wouldn't look like it would be too great for racing. But we'll have to see how it breaks down. And we got the LCQs coming up shortly to kind of let us know that. Here's that triple outside off triple. You could probably quad double as well into that corner. Um, lets you get to the inside right there as well. So. That's a big rhythm from the outside that we didn't see the first time you went through. And then into the whoop section again, trying to skim across these bad boys. And those do look pretty gnarly, but maybe not as good unless you've been practicing or not as hard as they have been in the past, unless you've been practicing a lot. Outside triple option here. I like that you're showing everyone a different line this time through as well. I'm probably going to leave the sand on the inside here and see what we get right here going triple in and triple out of this first rhythm section out of the sand too so there's kind of all your options that we got so far um nice putting that on display thank you kellen yeah trying to show some stuff off i think another option that will be possible through here is to go uh over table and then guys will quad into this corner as well so i think that'll be possible 250 guys might consider doubling in and then going for the quad off of right here as well but it doesn't really set you up for anything uh, too different at the end of this rhythm. So I think we might see some quads here and there. We might see a couple different options as well in the whoops like you mentioned. Uh, I, I played a couple laps on this track and for me it was honestly quite tough to not jump the whoops. Uh, I feel like it's really easy to go three three or three <clears throat> four two um, through this set and get to the inside line. So yeah, I think uh, we'll see a, quite a few different options play out and uh, hopefully all of it sets up for some pretty good racing. Yeah, I mean, and these guys, man, these getting to see these uh, 250 East guys in the Triple Crown format is going to be interesting as well. See kind of if we got some of those hot starters that can come out and, uh, you know, put down some quick laps. Guys that we've seen maybe excel in heat races going to be going to be cool to see uh, kind of how they how they end up doing it. Um, trying to fix my mic, too, with different settings here, guys. So if I get one that sounds better, you just let me know. Every time I talk, I've been trying a different one. Yeah, I do know that I'm currently having an issue with my uh, with your microphone. That's why I actually swapped our microphone so that I could record some podcasts on the one that I'm using. 
Uh, your microphone, when it is completely quiet, has a slight bit of static on it. I don't know why. I played with a lot of settings. I unplugged stuff. I tried not to cross wires. I did all the troubleshooting things that um, people always say, but it's literally just that microphone because when I switch wires, when I put this one on my stand and so on and so forth, um, yeah, like yours has just like the tiniest little bit of static when you're talking. It's not really when you're just stationary, but when you're talking, it has a static. So hopefully the bike sounds once we go racing, drown it out a little bit. But really what I want to know is uh, if anybody is hearing myself or Awood too loudly, one or the other, let me know. Because last week during the main events, uh, for whatever reason, Andrew was quiet and I was quite kind of loud. So this week I turned Awood up and hopefully... I think we got it sorted. I think that's the only thing that so. we needed to change. So, all right. If things are going smoothly and it seems like the chat room is cruising along, let's roll into our LCQs. We start off the night with our 250 last chance qualifier because there are 18 riders that have already been seated into the night show or the main events, whatever you want to call it. Uh, for the Triple Crown. But there are a lot of riders who have not yet. And there are four spots still available to make it into the 22 rider field. Uh, so yeah, we get to kick it off with the LCQs, eh, Would I mean, like, get your heart rate going in a hurry. It's the heat races kind of get us going. But the LCQs is what we're always so stoked about every week. Yeah, I mean, it's cool, too, because I didn't even know it was a Triple Crown right away until you <laughs> told me. And I was like, hell yeah, let's get this going. So uh, definitely gets us started off to a hot start, you know, if I'm feeling a little bit a little bit full from that delicious dinner we had tonight. Um, you know, this will definitely get my energy back up and get it going. Yeah, normally you see 40 guys go in, right? And you got multiple chances to get into the main event at the end of the night. And right now, you know, they're on the outside looking in from qualifying. Their nerves are racked as well. And it's about to go down. And, you know, you got 22 guys going for four spots right here um, right away. And if you don't make it, you, you don't get a chance to really race at all tonight. So... That's why we like these so much. It's They're hectic. Uh, it's nerve-wracking for everyone. There's a lot on the line, all these points and stuff like that. And as we saw in the 450 class that will be after this race, Alexis LeClaire is going to be in the LCQ um, if he is showing up for the night. And that's going to be pretty much a do-or-die for him, someone who's you know kind of battling for championship points uh, week in and week out. Yeah, I'm not sure if LeClaire will be in the LCQs or not. Um, but either way, we are about to go... Uh, LCQ racing in the 250 class trying to give you guys a rundown of who is on the gate for this one here as uh, maybe your favorite rider is lining up in this one so Johannes Brindall, Jack Mark, Cold Betts uh, Kyle Moreno I believe is how it's just Moreno FN but I'm not sure um, Kyle Boardman, Carl Robitaille uh, I think uh, Killian Mortiz, Austin Bear, Carl Novak, Logan Mortberg Nick Thomas Sunis, Jet Wisdom, J.R. Reyes Max Wilczek, Ryder Plouffe Jonathan George, Ryan Chousey, Matt Cromie, Colgress, Kerry Owings, Will Now, and Joey Bradstreet going to the line in this one. So here we go, folks. It's time to drop the gate here tonight in Indianapolis. LCQs will kick it off five minutes plus a lap. It's the 250 LCQ. It's live on <clears throat> Star Your Systems, and we are ready to go drop that gate in Indy. That looks like a KTM oh, and a Suzuki Cromie. up I think the inside. It's on the 39 that got there first, but he oh, is taken down. down. Jack Mark is going to come out with the whole shot. And so it's Jack Mark leading early on in this one as he leads us through the first couple of corners. JR Reyes, Max Wilczek, Ryan Chousey, all up here, as well as Austin Baird just hanging on in the five spot. Kyle Boardman right behind him as we watch these guys go through these rhythm sections on the first couple of laps. And already, I think that's Jack Mark, who just went down with the lead and hands it over to J.R. Reyes. Yeah, it looks like maybe one of his teammates or just a similar-looking rider there ran into him. J.R. Reyes, though, unable to get the rest of that rhythm section cleanly, falls back to second, and that's Wilczek taking over the position. Uh, Reyes had to slow up a little bit there, coming across the start straight. Just like that, he's having a hard time through the whoops. They all kind of are. Ooh, and the rider gets into the back of him. That was Cole Betts that went down on the back of Jack Mark towards the end of the whoop section. JR Reyes held up a little bit, but we'll check coming around, taking the green flag as we complete the first lap here in this LCQ. Yep, so Wilczek is kind of showing us the, the way around this track to start off things. He's going to go to the right side and go triple-double. Reyes switches it up, goes triple-triple into the corner in P2. Will now has now moved up into third with Ryder Ploof in the four spot, and it's getting tight. Killian Ortiz, Kyle Boardman all sitting here waiting for their opportunities as they get those guys tripling in 
out of that corner right there. Looks like, is that Thomas Sunis just going across the track? I don't know if he's trying to hit his Nikki T lines or whatever. Oh, and then Ortiz gets hit from behind Ooh. by Boardman. There's some riders down, and I think Ortiz checked up. Boardman hit him, and now he's up into fifth, battling up behind Will now in this transfer spot. Yeah, a little bit of action right there. We didn't see right off the track, riders going down, but Will now trying to get past him right here. Uh, solidify your position. You don't like being on the bubble. Um, and look at that around the outside trying to do something. Uh, Boardman or goes by or goes around the outside trying to do something, but he actually loses some time. But Ploof now gets past, and he's holding on to the fourth place spot. Look how close these three are here going in the sand. Yeah, Boardman is closed right up behind Ploof, and we're going to get a good indication. Wow, split lines and Ploof crossed over to go 3-2 into this corner, crossed up in front of Boardman. And now Boardman's cutting back up underneath, almost side-by-side side into the triple, but he cases that triple and falls back in line as, ooh, now almost going down right there was Ploof on the triple. And these guys are really struggling with this back rhythm section, man. Logan Mortberg has tightened it up. He's going to try to make the pass on Boardman. And look at the different options these 250 guys are dealing with. This Ploof almost goes oh. down. Mortberg jumps off the track, and Boardman goes into the final transfer spot. Now Mortberg is going to bring Carl Novak with him as these guys are still fifth and sixth, trying to close up on Kyle Boardman. Yeah, I think those two right 90s that you got with those step-on, step-off sections, the 250s are struggling with a little bit more. But then it does bring into play all the both inside and outside into that long rhythm. And some guys, you know, if you can nail a double or a triple or if you have any wheel spin coming out of that corner, it, it creates multiple, multiple different lines um, through that section. So I think that's going to be something to keep an eye on with the 250 class uh, all night. And we'll have to see if the 450 class replicates the same thing. But Boardman getting that uh, triple single there cleanly, and he is now trying to kind of settle in and uh, pull away. But he still has some um, somebody all right there on his tail. That is Logan Mortberg, and he looks like he's pressuring right now. Same rhythm at the beginning right here. Can they both get it cleanly? And they do. One tripling, both tripling to the outside, so they're going to stay pretty much even as they come across uh, the starts right here. Yeah, look at Mortborg trying that inside line in the uh, U-turn right there before this whoop section. And the jump line is working, tripling to the inside. Mortberg makes the pass into fourth place around Kyle Boardman. So now it's Logan Mortberg in the final transfer position as we come up to about four minutes into this LCQ. We've only got a five minute plus one lap race here tonight. So these guys making quick work and Will now just goes down out of the three spot. Mortberg almost landed on him, but that's a freebie for Kyle Boardman who moves back into the transfer spot and he's back on the bubble again. Yeah, on the bubble for sure, but definitely has uh, some free air behind him. See him, looks like he knew he wasn't going to get that step off and tried to drop down into it or step onto the next table. Um, pretty interesting lines, those 250 riders really struggling in what I thought would be the easiest section on the racetrack for them. But Boardman just needs to keep circulating. Uh, he definitely kind of just has enough room right now. But uh, the rider coming up behind him looks like he's got some speed, so we'll have to keep an eye on it. Boardman has struggled in this, wh in this whoop section. And look at that, rider closing in on the rear end of him. Yep. And that's Will now back up, trying to pressure and get back into a transfer spot. Yeah, these uh, positions have really kind of opened up a lot. Will now 16 seconds off the lead. It continues to be J.R. Reyes cruising out front right here. Will check has settled in the second, and now Mortberg, of course, has moved into the three spot. So all eyes right now on Boardman versus Will now. And what's going to happen in this battle? We'll go on board with Will now and get an on-board perspective of this racetrack here tonight. Things are tightening up, and like you said, man, this back rhythm section, these Ooh. 250 guys are really struggling getting on both of those tables. But if you can, it's huge. And look at this. Will now gets the triple on off. That's going to tighten it up real quickly here as we close down into the white flag lap. Yeah, you can see how much that let him ca uh, catch back up to Boardman there. Uh, really nails that rhythm section. Maybe could have made the corner after a little bit cleaner. Will has been faster in the swoop section, I think. Going for the triple line, and he does close up on Boardman. It's right up on his rear wheel. And look at that, man. Now we're down to two bike lengths right here. So this is definitely going to get tight and hairy as we come down. That is the white flag going right there. So these guys have one lap to go. Will now just dropped his fastest lap of the race with a 54.6. He's going to look to make a move here this lap. Hold on tight, folks. It's coming down to this final lap for the final transfer spot into tonight's Triple Crown in the 250 class here at Indianapolis. Will now on the rear fender of Kyle Boardman trying to make it into the fourth and final transfer spot. They both get the on-offs cleaned. They both go to the inside here to double in. And let's see who gets this section cleaner. They both get it actually really nicely. 
And let's see. Will now to the inside. Oh! Blocks the line and puts him down. He goes down as well, but he does not fall off the bike. And it turns out to be a beautiful pass in the end. Winner, J.R. Reyes crosses the line in P1. Max Wilczek is going to come down to finish up in second. Logan Mortberg gets through to the main event. He finishes up in third. And Will now with a nice last lap pass to put uh, Kyle Boardman on the ground is going to the main events tonight here in Indianapolis. He looks stoked about it as well. Chromie misses out. That's a big one. Jet Wisdom also going home early. And then Kyle Boardman, who we saw in the final transfer spot, ends up seventh. Yeah, man, that was that was a great move right there by Will. Um, you know, Boardman triple to the outside there, just kind of left that line open. And uh, he did go down while taking him out, but I really don't. I think that's just kind of the way the game is. I think it was a great pass. He had, you know, over half a bike on him and kind of just hit rear wheel to front wheel. Um, so that was really cool to see right there. Um what I did like is if you look at the track map too, that's kind of his last passing spot because all you have to do if you're ahead right there after going across the start straight to the bottom right section of the track there, uh, you can hug that inside, get a preferred line through the whoops, and as long as you're ahead of the guy, you hug the next two insides and there's no more passing opportunities. So Will knew that and used the perfect, uh, the perfect chance to triple down the inside, make his pass, and not just play follow the leader. Um, I think that was that was great racing. Um, definitely shows, uh, you know, kind of uh, race smarts out there, <clears throat> able to uh, know where his transfer pass was and make it happen. As uh, we're just checking in on some stuff here, uh, Kellen is just talking, talking to the boys. But uh, getting ready for the 450 LCQ here, we will have, uh, if he is racing tonight, he did not get a lap in, maybe time constraints or something like that. Uh, for Alexis Leclerc, that is going to uh, be someone to keep an eye on for sure um, as we're racing here tonight. So um, 450 LCQ, man. That top 18, it's hard to get in the top 40 in this class. If I'm going into the qualifying knowing I got to be top 18, that is elite, elite level speed, right, Kellen? Oh, yeah. That uh, is the top of the, of the game, really. Um, these guys all shooting for that top 18 position uh, here tonight in qualifying are pretty much some of the 18 fastest riders in this game every single week because the NA series really is is the one that uh, people are chasing the titles for in Moto Options Supercross. There's obviously an EU series uh, and an AM series, but... Uh, Man, you want to be the king of Moto Option Supercross, and that's that's really what this is all about right here. So that's why we see those top 18 guys really putting it down, making things interesting, and and hopefully we do uh, get to see Alexis Leclerc. Apologies that I made you talk a little bit long there. That's trying fine. To, trying to fix some technical difficulties here. I know you guys uh, were saying something about the bit rate was going wrong, so I was taking a look at that. Um, also had a bit of an issue with our live timing display for some reason. Uh, so just trying to keep an eye on what's going on with that. But um, either way, we'll uh, we'll get it all dialed and make sure that uh, everybody can see what is going on. All right. Got that. So, well, don't mind me. You know, I, I know my plate. I know when I got to talk a little bit longer. And yeah, uh, live timing, I gave up a couple times because I almost name dropped the completely wrong people. It worked, I, th it, I think, like a lap or two into the race and then it seemed to kind of stop. So. Uh, that is nice to be able to glance over at that. But let's get a kind of a lineup check here oh, as Leclerc we see. Is here. <clears throat> Leclerc is here. So that is kind of the biggest thing right now. Um, not really, not saying he's the biggest one as he shows us a quad for the first time in that rhythm section. But that is someone who's, when you're top three, top five in the championship points, uh, it is a big deal when you don't get a time in. Uh, Spencer Turley, Hayden Stevenson, Alexis Leclerc, Bob Joe, Bryce Whelan, Tyler Nichols, Ethan Parks. Brandon Larson, Ryan Burke. Should have just read him off the screen because I didn't realize it scrolled that slow. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still just trying to fix a couple things here. Should have had this ironed out before we started, but that's okay. All right, here we go, folks. It's time for the 450 Last Chance Qualifier. Final opportunity for these guys to make it into tonight's main events here in Indianapolis. This is going to be a good one. Leclerc starting way outside. has got to get a good jump as here we go. The seven has got a pretty good one. Does he cut the line down? He's trying to dig deep Ooh. to that inside. He goes off the track into the sand, and the whole <clears> shot <throat> instead goes to Bob Joe. Bob Joe from Caleb Hall. Blake O'Brien's up there tripling down the inside into the lead, though. Hayden Stevenson on the 12 goes to the front. 
Yeah, that was that was crazy right there. We saw Leclerc send himself off into this into the other lane in the sand. I actually think that was pretty smart. Didn't give him a chance to get taken out and off the bike by anyone. Ooh. Stevenson, though, missing that triple on. Look how close this is. We got five Cowies right here. Looks like a real Whoa. life LCQ as well. Going for contingency. Jumps in the back of Hayden Stevenson. That's another rider down. But Hayden was able to bring it back after almost going down, tripling in. So we got Blake O'Brien ahead of Stevenson. And three riders right here, really close uh, at the end of the whoop section. Yeah, that was Ethan Parks getting into the back of Stevenson. And I'm trying to see which of the Cowie riders that was. It may have been Bryce Whelan, I think, getting uh, mixed up there. So O'Brien leads the first lap, Stevenson second, Parks third, and Blakely moves into the fourth spot. Caleb Hall uh, turning around with a good start here on the 16 is now fifth with Anthony Pachone in sixth. Nichols seventh, Rockefeller eighth. He just won the EU 450 main event last week in Birmingham and he's trying to have a good night. Spencer Turley knocking on the door for top 10 in points is in ninth in this one and then Cepeda rounds out our top 10. Leclerc looks like he is in 15th place so this is going to be a massive massive hill to climb to try to make the top four and you can see everyone's right in front of him but oh, he's going to get a couple freebies right there go up to 13th. We see some chaos going on right now for fourth so let's go up there. Parks <laughs> is off the track. Nichols just went by. Blakely went by as well. So it's still O'Brien, Stevenson, Hall, and then Blakely now moving into fourth. Pachone, then Parks getting sideways behind that. Also mixing it up is Tyler Nichols in the mix with uh, also Rockefeller closing in on the 88. It is so tight. Him. Yeah, Turley back there as well. And they're all trying to get up and get into this battle with Blakely holding on to the final transfer spot. Yeah, there's like 12 there's like 12 guys right here that are uh, just super super close. And if you're any of these riders, Chase B obviously wants to keep moving up from that fourth play, fourth position and he looks good after his great start, but he wants to keep going, but the main thing right here is do not go down. We Who's see a rider down, down there, that's Blake O'Brien. He crashes out of a top 2 spot there. And Chase B is now feeling a little bit more free air right there, and that moves everyone else up one spot. But you cannot go down. If you go down, you're going to be all the way back in 12th, 15th place. So uh, it's all about keeping the wheels on the ground and just staying steady. Yeah, it looks like Pachone has moved into the final transfer spot here on the 57. Tyler Nichols right behind him. So these are a couple uh, Spank Yamaha teammates. And then Rockefeller also still hanging on. O'Brien picks up from his crash. He's still 7th. Uh, looks like Turley may have lost touch with this group because he has fallen back. Leclerc, 10 seconds off the lead right now in the 10 spot. Really needs some help here with only two minutes and a lap left to go. So Stevenson is leading this race as he jumps to the outside right there. Hall is second, O'Brien third, and Pachone is in fourth. I think these Spink teammates want to try Ooh. to get up here and ruffle the feathers of the BPC number 21. Jumping to the inside, Blakely's going to lose that spot. He slips back to fourth. Here comes Tyler Nichols. Knocking on the door of opportunity on the 73. Yeah, and just like right there, we saw Chase B make his own mistake and go off the track and lose one position. Still in the transfer spot, but you can't be doing that if you're not getting into it with someone. Uh, you really can't be making your own mistakes right here. So it's all about trying to stay smooth and consistent. Tyler Nichols, though, is going to be pushing, so Blakely does now have to worry about the rider behind oh, and him. Oh, Chase B, yeah, gets Pachone there, a little mistake. And just like that, Nichols gets, they get two for right there. And that's Pachon going back to fifth. So one bobble for Pachon in the sand. And just like that, he's looking from the outside in. Yep, trying to work back up to his teammate. Whoa, Nichols with a little bit of lag, but does go over table quad and greased it. So now he's getting a little bit of a gap. Mistake hey right there by Caleb Hall, I believe that is. So he slips back to the four spot. Nichols moves up into third. It's still musical positions with Stevenson leading from Blakely, Nichols, and Hall now into fourth. And Pachone still right there in fifth, just waiting for an opportunity. These guys all trying to get to that inside line, and there's two different options. You blitz or you jump, and it seems like both are working out pretty good for these guys as we're coming down to the final 30 seconds on the clock. Yeah, and both of those options, blitzing or jumping, do need to end up on you hugging the inside. So it's really about making a pass while you're in that corner or while you're in the whoops or by uh, getting alongside them and getting the inside into that right-hander on the start because uh, if you're still following someone, you're just losing spots. So really interesting to see what, what these guys are doing and how they're breaking down the rhythm section 
or the whoop section, but look at Caleb Hall. Gets a nice line there right there. Small mistake as Caleb Hall triples on, but ooh, then the mistake ooh. by him. Look at that. Here comes uh, Pachon Trading back mistakes. The that was Nichols that almost went down off the track, and Pachone goes around the outside of his teammate to make that pass, then tucks back to the inside. By the way, I think that is Leclerc in the sixth spot, bringing Spencer Turley with him, who's creeping up on this battle. Oh, and now that's Nichols going down in the five spot. It is Leclerc and Turley closing up now from fifth and sixth. Pachone has breathing room behind him, but the white flag is in the air. Can Caleb Hall and Anthony Pachone hang on for one more lap as Alexis Leclerc tries to close this gap down? They have the space, but are they going to settle down? Yeah, man, I think it's uh, we're seeing a classic case of, of maybe not even really Leclerc putting down crazy heater lap times and catching up to these guys as to them all making their own mistakes and bringing themselves back. That's why when you are like in a 3-4 battle, you don't want to be fighting each other, uh -oh. uh, making mistakes. Pachon, though, makes one on his own right here. And just like that, look at Leclerc with a big quad double to the inside. Not able, close enough to make a pass, but definitely close enough to scare him. And look at this. Something's going to happen soon. Let's watch them oh keep an eye gosh. on Leclerc through the whoops. This is for fourth, and Leclerc is hopping really bad through the whoops. He saves it. Turley almost gets into him. It's down He's to the final turn. Does Leclerc go for it on Pachone? He gets close, but it's not going to be enough. Anthony Pachone crosses the line, P4. And Leclerc right now with penalties not in is out of the main events here in Indianapolis. Turley goes with him. Cepeda, Nichols, Parks. Rockefeller, Briscoe, Larson, Simos, Whelan, Niles, Joe, O'Brien, and Burke will also not be headed through. Going through so far, though, it will be Stevenson, Blakely, Hall, and Pachone based on penalties not coming through just yet. Let's see what happens. Yeah, I mean, seven. He'll need more than seven, uh, almost eight-tenths of cuts from a sixth-lap race. That's going to be difficult to get from someone who did finish up in fourth place position good uh ride by pachon to hold on to that leclerc just too many mistakes right there kind of going through the whoops i think he definitely got close in, or was going to be able to get close enough to make a move uh but he made a huge bobble himself and that kind of did it to him um unless Ooh. he was going to go for it leclerc actually had one and a half seconds of cuts Right, because he yeah. went, yeah, he's down now almost 2.6 seconds out of the transfer position. So just like that, man, uh, he really wasn't even close. But wow. I also want to give a shout out to the Stevenson. Uh, it looks like Caleb Hall might have got the position. Oh, no, Stevenson is 12. So uh, Stevenson, though, great ride, you know, he, early bobble after getting a good start, uh, but was able to salvage it, get back in the lead and just kind of pull away and chase B as well. Uh, really hard fought there. Uh, he was on the outside looking in for a little bit and got all the way back up to second. So good job for those guys. And they better get ready for three main events now. Yeah, good rides all around. Really unfortunate break there to see Alexis Leclerc going home early tonight. But uh, he's going to need to regroup and get ready to head west as we go to Seattle next week. Leclerc P3 in the championship out of the main events here tonight in Indianapolis. All right. Still trying to sort out a couple quick technical difficulties trying to uh, get access uh, to this sheet that our buddy pin to wind is sending me and I requested access but I've not got it um, all right so I think we should be back going good here with live timing uh, either way though 250 main event number one coming up first and this is a 10 minute plus one lap race and uh yeah, I mean, Triple Crown, catch the fever. These things are always fun because it's quick races, short time frame, <clears throat> and we get to see the best riders in each class three different times here tonight. Yeah, and you want to keep an eye on, you know, different strengths kind of work out for, for some people, uh, people that really have that kind of high sprint speed. They are still decently long races, you know, 10 and 12 minute races. So you do have to to still have some endurance, right? But But if you're someone that comes out and you always get good starts, you know, um, I'm thinking kind of Seth Carr, kind of good sprint speed. He's he's shown more consistency now, but always uh, good sprint speed, good starts, stuff like that. Uh, keep an eye on the 450 class. You know, Jacob Hubbard up until lap six, he'll be fast and he'll be up front. So just got to keep an eye on on some of these guys that have different skill sets, you know, good starters and really sprint speed guys because this is where they can shine. Sometimes they can't make it 15 or 20 minutes, <laughs> um, but... 
uh hubbard in chat maybe not happy about that but if they can't normally make it consistently through the whole main you know without having a couple crashes they might be able to do it here with a little bit of shorter races yep no question about it so going to the line in the 250 class here tonight we'll uh just make sure let's see if i can get this okay got it uh max wilchek johnny padoni d mills uh jet holyhead is back this week when was last time we saw the Australian sensation of Jet Holyhead racing. That's good to see. Seth Crotty, oh, Logan Morton, Rogan McIntosh, uh, Jared Gummison is here as well. Trying to get in the server. It'd be great. There we go. Uh, Seth Carp, Johnny Padani already said that. Will Canal or Will Now. Tom Quino, Alex Doyle, Joey Carter, uh, Max Twalik, Jeff Cooper, Maxine Vanderbeek, J.R. Reyes, Austin Partolo, Christopher McPherson, Austin Partolo already said that. Cody Miami Coop. I don't know who that is. Rasmus Balzer. Also out here, I spec powered by Team Burtis is who Cody Miami Coop is on the 62. Who the heck is that? Do you know? Number 62? No. Cody Miami Coop. Cody Miami Coop. Cody. On, a, on the 62. Bellinger. Cody Bellinger? Uh -huh. Chill down. Cody. I'm trying to think of Cody's. Oh, he's got gear. 14. Wyndham. Oh, Wisdom? Oh, Sam Weigman. Weigman. <laughs> I mean, that's the gear that he's using. Um, Honestly, who knows? Nobody. I am knows. once again, what is this, round 10, 11? If we had the president here, I would be keeping track of naming convention. <laughs> I am once again calling for penalties for naming convention. <laughs> gear skins i am once again standing on your porch just come on emails hasn't changed his name in three uh to four weeks because uh, so i'm still what does rcw him. stand for uh oh he told me once um right, i don't know you, while you say that let's racing Hit me with your uh, the Design Lab Co. Whole Shot winner here, 250 main one, so Andy Wood. Are we picking per race or yeah, are we race. getting... No, per we're race. not getting one for night like a FFL and Fantasy. No, per race. You gotta pick per race. Oh. You know what? I'm gonna go. Jet right. Holyhead. Better make it quick. Jet so Holyhead, not scared. Okay, he qualified scared. top five. I like it. I'm going Seth Crotty. Mm. I'm going Seth Crotty. Oh. Uh, all right, here we go, folks. 250 time to go racing here in Indianapolis. It looks like I just got sent a red plate right now from District Designs for Seth Carr. So shout out to them. Here we go, folks. Drop the gate in Indianapolis. Who's going to get the Design Lab co whole shot? Ooh, part of load goes deep. And it's Seth Carr, whose skins I do not have, getting the whole shot. Oh, huge crash going into the second turn right there. A lot of guys just went down. So it's Carr, Vanderbeek, Quino, Alex Doyle, Johnny Padani, Jet Holyhead with a good start, also mixing it up as well. And this is frantic action in this little group here on the first lap, but they are all chasing Seth Carr, our points leader. Yeah, Seth Carr with a great start. Great start. I, I kind of wanted to pick him, but I thought I'd try to be different. Uh, Seth Carr, though, always a good starter and early sprint speed. So we'll see what can happen. Look, he's already got such a huge gap to second place right now because of that big start that we had or crash that we had uh, kind of off the start. So good for him. I mean, man, he's trying to come out and lay down the law. He's uh, up there in the championship, so wants to keep it moving. And I don't know if anyone can catch him if he rides at oh, his speed. Oh, my what? God. What the hell? Look at that. He got crossed up on the face of that triple in and just barely nose down, did a front flip and rode out of it and kept going. So Seth Carr feeling it here tonight and leading early on with a front flip in a rhythm section. How often do you see that one? Oh, speaking oh of front flips, Vanderbeek tried Vanderbeek. to... He said, I can do that too. Mom, look <laughs> brings, at me. He brings Tom Quineau with him. Oh. Quineau stayed up on two wheels and now Quineau is going to be in a fight with Jet Holyhead. So French men versus Australian here in the Holyhead versus Quino battle. Meanwhile, Johnny Padani moved up into the two spot. So Seth Carr pulling away out front, but Padani has now found his way into second as this fight for third continues to roll along. 
Yeah, man, that was absolutely wild. It was half a lap ago. My my heart stopped at the first one, and by the time I started to take a breath again, we saw someone else going over the bars. So these guys just making small mistakes, seat bouncing, and a uh, line choice. But man, that what what a wild start to this 250 race here. The first of three of the night for them. Cano though has got some pressure here. Goes outside to guarantee himself that on on off, uh, and I kind of like that when you have the room to go outside there. Um, the guys are struggling when they go inside, but. You know, right now, just kind of going, hitting his marks, and uh, not really losing too much time. But look at this, inside versus outside line Ooh. on the wall. Oli had uh, got real tight right there trying to make that pass. And again, we're seeing these guys jump through the whoops. I was talking to some people earlier today who called me uh, slow and old because I jumped through the whoops on my hot lap. And look at all these young bucks in the 250 class doing it as well. So Quino up and over the finish line jump, still holding on to third. Goes wide, leaves the door wide open, and allows Jed Holyhead to make the pass. What was that about Andrew Wood? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. And I think that there's not even like that outside line at all in the sand is kind of uh, preferred for much of anything. So just kind of blew the inside right there and, and gave him a gave him the spot. But look at this. Cano going up the inside <laughs> here. Different lines. Holyhead went outside but wasn't able to triple. So right there, he just lost the spot. Cano off the track, though. Holyhead back in front of him, and they're bringing... Balzer. Balzer, the number one E right there, bringing him up behind him. He gets stuck behind Cano, though. But look at this three-man battle here. Balzer on the way up. Holyhead and Cano both making mistakes. And look Ooh. at that. Cano gets in the back of him. Uh, Balzer makes the pass, and Holyhead still holding on. Yeah, Holyhead kind of got hung up himself at the end of the whoops, and Cano hit the rear tire there of uh, Holyhead on the 33. So Balzer has now made his way up into the four ride. It is still Seth Carr leading, going the other way in the background, and he's got a pretty good gap now established over Johnny Padani. It's looking like about four or five seconds, I think, by the eye test right there, and then Holyhead and Balzer in this fight with Quino. It's McIntosh in sixth ahead of Cody Miami Coop in seventh, uh, Max Chwalik in eighth, Alex Doyle ninth, and Seth Crotty rounding out our top 10 and it's just an absolute dog fight back here look at this absolute fr three wide oh! on the on offs with yeah. carter putting jr reyes on the deck as he moves up garrett hollenbeck who is currently fourth in this championship i believe has now just moved his way into a fight for the 10 spot behind alex doyle so fun battles throughout the field it is all uh, hectic out here and seth carr Threw the lead away somewhere. We missed it, and Padani took it over. Now he just crashed, and suddenly it is really tight at the front of the field. Padani just ahead of Seth Carr, and then that fight back there as balls are down the inside. Gets Jed Holyhead in that berm to move up into third, and the 1E is marching his way into the one position here uh, in this main event. Look at that line from Padani crossing over and mix it, missing the pixie stick, but still getting that line. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's the first time I think we've seen that so far. Definitely on camera. People might have been doing it, but man, uh, Padani is just showing some good speed here. Whenever he does come out and start winning races, it does seem like the speed that he has uh, is just like a little bit next level and no one can really touch him. Just can he keep it up? Uh, throughout the three races of the night. Carr got speed as well, but it looks like he's losing touch a little bit. And Balzer, man, he's showing us the experience he has, the reason why he's running that number one plate from last year. Uh, he's trying to come out and show these these guys that he's got what it takes to get a win too. So he push, him th pushing through the field like that was very impressive. And we're less than six minutes into this race, and I like these short races because uh, we get to see not a lot of separation Padani right there getting the jump across, going over. Look at that rhythm. Dude, triple. It, it's so different. Over, triple, triple, single. Like, way different than anybody else is doing in that rhythm section. And I, I like that rhythm section, man. It's created so many options, especially in this 250 class where they can't get a consistent triple online. Uh, these guys are really all over the place. It's pretty cool to see. Yeah, and it's. I don't know if he's been doing it every lap, but I did get my live timing uh, up finally here. He doesn't have the fastest lap, but he's only down by one hundredth of a second. Well, so, you say that, oh, and, and he look just at that. Seth, wait. Well, it flashed purple for a second because Padani put in a fifty-one eight nine eight, and then Seth Cargo's fastest lap of the race at a fifty-one eight three five. So they are separated by less than a tenth of a second for fastest lap of the race right now separated by 2.3 seconds on the racetrack but i feel like balzer looks to be the aggressor in this battle even though seth carr and padani just went faster than him man i feel like the 1e is here to play 
Yeah, I think it just might be the time that he gained. Oh, look, look at, at that, that though. Seth Carr misses the rhythm, and just like that, triple, triple to the outside, and he already put a gap on him right there because Carr not able to continue doing big rhythm or big lines through that section. And now Balzer jumping through the whoops here. Gets him nice and clean. Has a chance to get close to Padani as Padani messed up in that tight corner as well as Carr behind him. Yeah, did the exact same thing, I think, sliding out from that inside rut and then ending up uh, in between Ooh. lanes there in the track. So Balzer just Hot lays left. in a 51-6-6-4. New fastest lap of the race here on lap number eight for Rasmus Balzer. Now on lap nine of this one. And I think he's coming, man. He's trying to close this gap down on the race leader. Yeah, he, look, he looks great, man. Yeah, I didn't know if it was okay. They're battling. They're slowing up. But Balzer, once I saw him moving through the pack like that, now he's got clear air and can do what he does. Look at this triple on offline. It's a nice triple triple. And he's tripling to the outside, but he is railing this right here, getting so much speed and not losing anything uh, to Padani, who's actually doing a whole different rhythm through there and going inside to inside. So uh, balls have been nailing this corner right here. See that rut? It's like two or three different ruts because people are braking and accelerating at different times. Uh, so that's why you see some of those guys tucking their front, oversteering and understeering there. 52-4 for Balzer this time by 52 flat for Padani. So Padani has responded out front in the closing stages of, the stages of this one. We're under two minutes on the clock in this one to go, uh, plus that lap. So once time expires, the white flag will wave next time by for the leaders. Lap traffic trying to get out of the way as Padani cuts across, does the double overline still, and Balzer jumping to the outside, still going triple on off into this rhythm, but it is real tough to get that line clean, especially as this track wears in a little bit more and those ruts get a little bit more challenging. Love to see the options, man. Inside, outside in these corners, the rhythm section's different. You can jump the whoops, you can blitz the whoops. This track is really actually kind of providing the goods, even though it may look a little bit one line. Yeah, if you, before I saw the way it was built, if you just show me the track map and, and not having a lot of 180 bowl berms and stuff like that, I would have said this track would be terrible. The way that it's built, props to the track team for putting together such a good track um so many different options so many different ruts and lines uh all sorts of stuff going on here and and i think that the 450 class will give us just as much but 250 class is fun because some of the insides are really really tricky so you do see people opt to go for an outside when it might not be faster but it's more consistent but donnie makes a small mistake there with his line so that's gonna allow balls to come up as they start to get into laugh traffic as well so Going to keep an eye on that. Who's doing the fastest lines right now? But as the track breaks in, uh, who is able to kind of consistently do those three races in a row? Just like that, Padani Ooh. makes another mistake on those ruts that we saw. And he's just going to miss the timer. We got about 15 seconds left on the clock. So Padani checks in, and it's two to go this time by. Balzer has been inching that gap down. He's not close enough to make an attack yet. For the race lead but it's getting closer and now Padani just had a big swap right there lands outside in the berm kind of slides a little bit and here comes the one e of rasmus balzer two to go in indy who gets it done in main one yeah it's interesting to see i checked those last lap times because it looks like balzer is coming up oh that was definitely close there balzer was actually two tenths slower than Padani last lap even though we saw multiple mistakes from Padani. but look at this fighting through the lappers he gets through them fairly cleanly for how close that seemed to be and balzer looks like he lost some time and he still has not gotten to those lappers so lappers definitely playing a small part here uh potentially in this as they keep fighting right there and <laughs> take each other out <laughs> yeah. back there and like 13 14 something like that back there and i don't think Balzer got by too after that they push each other wide but they're still fighting each other and Balzer's behind them white flag is in the air so i think this is now at the point where it's definitely hurting <laughs> Balzer and helping the race leader padani as Balzer has to go around them as they both got into each other finally went down seth Carr is still lurking back there but final lap for Johnny Padani. He's just got to put it together for a few more corners. But this is the tricky part of the track right here. Getting through this corner. He's not going to go for the double overline, but still rolls in. Then tries to go on off right here. So what is... Well, now Seth Carr has gotten by Balzer in a pass for second place. Balzer made a mistake. And Carr takes advantage. Balzer casing that triple. Still goes for the triple out and gets it. Seth Carr getting this thing a little bit closer, but I think it's going to be Padani here. Through the whoops one more time, rolls to the inside, lands in that rut, kind of swings it back around. Fight for second is still on Lappers with two turns go to go as Padani brings it down. Johnny Padani takes main event number one, and the fight for second was so close to the line. It's going to be bar to bar. Oh, my gosh. 
eight, eight thousandths. thousandths of a second. It goes to Seth Carr. We'll have to see after penalties. That was so close at the flag. And then Tom Quino looks like he's going to just hold off Jet Holyhead there for the four spot. No, sorry, McIntosh actually on Covenant gets through into fifth. Holyhead ends up sixth with Jared Gummison coming down the line on the 71 machine. Or 77, I should say, excuse me. Uh, he'll pick up the seventh spot. Joey Carter, great ride for Dr. Do Racing's Joey Carter. He gets eighth in this first main event. Jeff Cooper, through the final turn, gets ninth. And D-Mills getting teed up there by Chwalik, but Chwalik lays it down. D-Mills rounds out your top 10. Wilczek gets by Chwalik for 11th. It'll be Chwalik in 12th. In Hollenbeck ends up 13th. Vanderbeek 14th. And then all these guys a lap down behind that. What a race that was. And in the end, uh, looks like Seth Carr and Balzer, neither of them had cuts. So it's going to be Carr ahead of Balzer by eight thousandths of a second for second place at the line. But Johnny Badani takes main event number one. Yeah, that was absolutely crazy down to the wire. Uh, as we were watching... Um as we were watching Padani go into the last corner there, I saw some lappers get into it, and I think that's what happened. They fell kind of hit on the inside line, um, and that allowed Balzer, I'm guessing, to uh, make a pass on Carr, or maybe Carr got held up, you know, and was able to get past that. But, man, what a great and close race by that top three right there. And then as well, uh, Holyhead was in fourth drop back to, uh, behind Cano and McIntosh. But that four, five, six battle was super close as well. All with all those guys within about three seconds. So, man, bringing great tight racing, right? This is it's almost like a heat race. It's it's that perfect uh, middle ground between a heat race and a main event where it's not too short, where we don't get to see people come up and make moves like we did see balls are doing. Uh, but it's not. Uh, not so long to where we get super, super spread out. So, whoa. Oh, you don't pay whoa. for that? Nobody whoa. does. Stop it. Um, trying to get these add on bikes for the district designs folks so that we can see Seth Carr the next race. So, someone in chat, please remind me to disconnect uh, from the game. <laughs> disconnect from the game. <laughs> Quit the game. Just disconnect. <laughs> Quit the game after this 450 main event. Uh, so that we can get Seth Carr's bike in the game for main event number two of the 250 class. All right, 450 boys rolling it out here. Pablo Vial, Jack Haley, Caleb Hall, Frank Jackson, Braden Castellaneta, Colby Eaglin, Chase Blakely, Braden Carter, Devin Davis, Logan Leitzel, Braden Tharp, Kevin Frazaka, Alexis LeClaire, Noah Bindis, Hayden Stevenson, Wait, Anthony Pachon, Evan Holt, Caden Speck, Tanner Rogers, Tyler Lang, Jacob Hubbard, Evan Vanderkoy. Who was in the LCQ that isn't in this one and LeClaire is. Is that a, uh, like a sponsor exemption type deal? I mean, is it past champion, but... Um, how? I'm confused how he's in this race. So it was Hayden Stevenson, who is not lining up. Oh, no, he is. So Hayden Stevenson made it. Blakely made it. Pachon. Pachon made it. Who is the guy in between them that is missing? No, Caleb Hall. So who's not in? Siebold gave him his spot. Oh, so they made five in from the LCQ then instead? Mm. Yeah, LeClaire paid him off in uh, crypto. That's uh, what I'm hearing. Oh, LeClaire paid him off in crypto? Come you can on pay now. me That's off. LeClaire... To never say anyone else's name ever. All right. Um, but yeah, so it looks like it is going to be LeClaire in tonight, even though in the LCQ he was going to be out, but Seabolt gives him the freebie. Whoops, I pressed the wrong graphic. It is not 250 main event two. I apologize. There we go. 450 main number one coming up here in Indianapolis. Uh, Andrew Wood, you got a the Design Lab Co. whole shot winner for me here. Is it obvious? I think it's obvious. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm doing it. Yep. I'm doing uh, Hubbo. All right. I'm going to go Leclerc because I like gate 23 from the far outside for him. What do you think? 22. I mean, he, he almost had it in his in his LCQ even because he didn't have a gate pick uh, for his LCQ. He was probably going to be second or third and just uh, got scared, jumped in the sand on his own. So I do think there is potential there. And uh, I like the little Hail Mary, though. 
Yep. Look at Kevin Verzaka on this show, Chutoku. Chutoku. The Twitch.tv for Zaka29. Machine. Ooh, get Yeah, it. but get everyone it. watching streams is right here, Kevin. But maybe during the week, go maybe mm -hmm. uh, watch and practice or do something else fun. Actually, I heard last week that there was some people that will watch like for Zaka or Carter's perspective for their races and then come back over here for the races in between. And you know what? I respect it. You like your guy, you watch his race, then you come back over here and watch the race as well. So we appreciate the support regardless of which. So thanks guys for tuning in uh, wherever it is that you are tuning in from. So I got LeClaire. You have got Jacob Hubbard for the Design Lab co hole shot. Everybody else is in for a good race to kick off the night here. 450 main event number one in Indianapolis. Let's go. It's Hubbard with a great jump. I don't see LeClaire on the seven now. He just went deep, deep, deep to the outside. And Hubbard pulls out the Design Lab Co. Oh, shit. He's got Tyler Lang right behind him. Tanner Rogers on the 55 is up there. Castellaneta with a good start. Carter jumping into the four spot on the one. It is KTM Galore at the front with Hubbard leading. Let's go. What do I win? High five? Uh, yeah, high five. All right, I guess. perfect. Jacob Hubbard, look at that with the big quad line. I love this 450 class because we do get to see the bigger lines from these guys. And their starts are so much cleaner, it seems, uh, more consistently. We got this top four right here, this pack so close and so fast. And then a bunch of them right behind them as well. Seeing these guys, look, Hubbard going all the way to the outside there, not really messing around with the inside line. Maybe he'll wait until a rut starts to develop, uh, but just going for what he knows is going to be safe and didn't really seem to lose any time right there. Yeah, actually kind of gained time, I feel like, going down the next straight. Oh, my God, so There's, many guys down at the end of the whoops right there. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, here comes Braden Carter on the one. He's closed up behind T-Lang on the five as they go through this little rhythm section into the Supercross triple. Hubbard a little short, Lang a little short. Carter gets it clean, and it is really close here at the front of the field. Everybody jumping to the outside. It's Castellaneta on the 22 still back there. Lang jumped off the track. Carter goes for the... Oh my gosh, he tried to mad skills motocross that section a little bit, and he just absolutely yard sails out of third. So Carter <clears throat> goes from the three spot all the way back to... Well, the timing 13th, and scoring 12th. is... 12th. Okay, I so got him 12th. in 12th. Yeah, he went down 13th and moved back up to 12th right now, and now he's back to 13th. So I've got it updating. He yeah dropped so far right there. But, man, Brutal. our 1, 2, 3 of Hubbard, Lane, Castaneda is hot and spicy right now. These guys are all within two seconds right here at the front of the field. Yeah, this is going to be a good race. Uh, Carter was going to try to make it a boring one, I feel like, by getting around all those guys. But now Hubbard dealing with the pressure from T-Lang and I don't know about what it is about Indy, but T Lang and Indianapolis just goes together like peanut butter and jelly. I swear this guy <laughs> one Daytona in Indy, I think in 2021. And then every time we've been back to Indy since those uh, rounds, I feel like Lang shows up to play on the five and we have not seen him really battling that much uh, at the front this year for the 2021 race Factor gaming uh, pro motocross champion. But looks like he's feisty here tonight in Indy. Yeah, one thing I, I do feel like I've seen from T. Lang this year is he's gotten a, one or two good starts where I've seen him up front. We talk about him a little bit, but he hasn't been able to stay off the ground and be there at the end of the race. So you kind of uh, just forget about him that he has been up there. Um, so hopefully he'll be able to keep the wheels on the ground this whole race and uh, put together a good finish in this first one and maybe build some confidence. But yeah, some guys just like certain tracks. Uh, certain track designs, floor sizes, stuff like that. And Tyler Lang looks like he's gelling right now for sure. Gaining a little bit of time right here. Uh, not able to get that quad, but I'm not sure how much of a difference that really makes between these two right here. Yeah, I feel like for Hubbard it's good because he can defend the inside by going quad. Double his Lang, finally makes a big mistake. He's going to go off the track in the whoops. Got to be careful with that track reentry as Castellaneta on the 22 is down the inside. Ooh, a little slide out and Lang has to check up right there. But uh, yeah, cool to see those two options working out pretty evenly as Hubbard continues to lead the race. 1.6 second lead there over Castellaneta. And Castellaneta, just like Lang winning Daytona a few years ago, Castellaneta gets his first career Supercross win two weeks back at Daytona. We roll to the dark dirt of Indianapolis and he looks like he's ready to go and win another one here tonight as he kind of slides it into that corner. Wow. But man, just picks it right back up and keeping it close with his teammate out front. 
I mean, one thing you have to remember too is our fastest, Braden Castaneda was our fastest qualifier by four tenths over the next fastest ra racer there. So uh, he does have the raw speed uh, gap that he needs to be able to make this pass right here. So um, not showing it completely right now, actually a big bobble, but able to wrestle it back in uh, before he goes around that inside. And actually T Lang looks like he might have tipped it over behind him. Just oh, like Hubbard. that though, that's a mistake by Hubbard. He goes deep, deep, deep into that corner. And oh. just like that, on the entrance to lap six, Jacob Hubbard <laughs> tips it over after yelling at me, saying that he would not throw it away. Oh, no, Hubbard. Well, he's got a chance to go back and get Castellaneta just ahead of him, and we'll see if he can turn things around. But, man, Castellaneta on one here tonight out front leading this thing. So Hubbard slides back to second. Lang now third. Eaglin is still just hanging out in fourth. He's just been lurking back here waiting for those uh, mistakes. For Zaka now in the five spot with Pablo Vial up in the sixth. Chase Blakely seventh. Leitzel eighth. Leclerc is ninth. And Noah Bindis rounds out our top ten. Where is the defending champ and current points leader, Braden Carter? Wow. Buried right now in 20th place. So this is going to be a huge kind of a goose egg score for Carter if he can't turn things around and get a better result in this first main event because you can't have a 20 and still expect to end up on the box here tonight. You can still turn your night around with two good scores after this, but this is going to be detrimental for a chance for him to end up on the podium or even win if this is where he stays. Yeah, I'm going to probably try to have to ask Carter and see what the hell happened here, but... Um, hopefully we'll get some info before the next race. Oh. Whoa, but just like that, Jack Haley goes down into the back of another rider and Braden Carter ends up pile driving into him. Actually does pick up a spot, but loses probably about five seconds right there. So uh, not going his way as well. The only good thing is we did talk about briefly, if you do get a 21st place or 19th, well, now he's an 18th, um, you are able to kind of uh, go 1-1 one, one and balance that out. And it's like you got a fifth place on the night. So uh, going to have to see what he can do in the next two races and how far up he can get in this one. Yeah, we'll keep a track of his progress as the race goes on. Meanwhile, Castellaneta has inched it back out to about a three-second advantage or uh, two seconds now over Hubbard. So Hubbard has stayed the course and stuck right with his teammate. But these guys are just kind of hitting their marks, putting in the laps right now. Seems like a track here in Indianapolis where it's really hard to gain time, but it's also really, really detrimental to make a big mistake. You cannot uh, have those crashes because everyone's been pretty consistent, I feel like, when we see them out front in these main events. Yeah, a few weeks back, I think it might have been uh, Detroit, actually, the opener for the East Coast class here. Um, when these 450 guys got to it, it looked like the track was what they were racing the most, and it was very difficult in transitions. I do feel like we have seen a lot of Maybe not so much straight up battling with guys, but uh, trying to stay close and wait for that guy to make a mistake. But then the track also doesn't look that difficult. So I'm not sure if it's just a timing thing that we have a lot of rhythms and everyone kind of has to be on point. Maybe they're not individually that difficult, uh, but when you kind of get unsettled or your nerves start getting racking up that you are making mistakes. So I'm really not sure why we're not seeing or why we're seeing so many mistakes here tonight, but kind of how it's shaping up yeah these guys are just doing the laps man it just doesn't feel like hubbard's gaining or losing any time necessarily on <clears throat> castellanetti still blitzing the whoops and going outside but i don't know is that making a difference let's see lap time wise 1.4 second the gap right now as they cross in they still have about five minutes Ooh. left in this race 50.5 but then a 50.6 for castellanetta so <clears throat> obviously they're both kind of hitting their stride right now as the track wears in biggest thing they're going to have to deal with, I feel like, coming up here soon is lap traffic. There's a cluster of them ahead of Castellaneta in this next rhythm section. Maybe five, six guys battling it out. And one of them might even be Braden Carter on the one who's still back there. So this could be uh, where the race is won or lost in this first main event here for the 450 guys tonight. Yeah, I'm looking at a Hubbard shifter at the bottom right, the tachometer, and seeing the gears he and he's in. He holds first for so long, and then he'll like bang three or four gears at a time uh obviously fifth in the whoops that's the strategy lately but it's really weird he'll jump from like first to fourth off the lip of a jump and i feel like he's running some really low gearing that he just went one three four right there just completely skipping past second and not really getting any pull from it just really different from the way i've always kind of ridden my bike 
uh, here in MX Simulator. Yeah, maybe just uh, trying some different stuff because this this racetrack is unique as well. Like it is one of the weirdest tracks we've seen this year in terms of layout, design, and the flow of it as well. So it could be thrown off a little bit by it trying some different stuff. Uh, meanwhile, though, Castaneda stretched it back out ever so slightly, even dealing with this lap traffic has now got it uh, back out over two seconds again. Still T Lang and now Eaglin inching up onto him in a battle for third. So this could turn into a good fight before this is over. How about Chase yeah, Blakely? Chase Blakely and Lightsoul right here in the yeah. battle to the death. Out of the LCQ though for Chase B. And then another shout out to Logan Lightsoul who's cross jump Carl and Chase Blakely right now. He's going to get back on. Is That is not Carter for position, is it? Uh, no, no it can't not. be. He's got to be getting lapped right now. Then wow. that means you're getting Braden Carter. Yeah, is uh, and he gets into the back of Blakely, and Blakely ends up going OTB a little bit right there. So, yeah, this is a rough first main event here for Brayton Carter. Quick shout out as well to Logan Leitzel making the 250 main event in Birmingham in real life this past weekend. That is the same guy for any of those uh, first you, ever, huh? Yeah, first ever, I believe. So, that is the same guy for those of you who are wondering. Leitzel, uh, former 250 national champion in this game, and great to see him putting in a good moto out here in the first. Uh, round, race of the Triple Crown here tonight, but uh, massive kudos to him for making that main event in Birmingham. Back to our leader. We're down to a minute and a half on the clock in this one or there about for Castellaneta. 4.6 second advantage. Still kind of working through the lap traffic, but I think this is now his race to lose. Is oh, It's tight there with Stevenson. I don't think these guys are going to catch him if he keeps hitting his marks like this. Honestly, I don't think so, and we saw him get a little flustered there. Uh from that lapper, but still make it through the rhythm section cleanly. Hubbard almost quadding right there. That was actually kind of crazy. Um, but I think Braden Castaneda just kind of came out and just dropped it on the table in front of these guys, laying with a small mistake right there. But man, fastest qualifier, come out and uh, you know win your first uh, race of the night here in this Triple Crown. Uh, really trying to make a statement here, and I think we're not done with seeing the rest of Braden Castaneda for the night. Colby Eaglin, though. Uh, trying to still kind of get up to Hubbard, and I'm not sure. Tyler Lang is now dropped way, way back and not really in the picture. Yeah, Lang back in 14th. Uh, he had a full fall off. Well, Lang cased the Supercross triple in front of uh, Kalen, <clears throat> or in front of Eaglin, I should say. Went off the track, rejoined, and Eaglin got him. And then I think the very next rhythm section, Lang went down. So there is that gap now. He's not even to the finish line jump yet, whereas Eaglin is through uh, into this second, third corner complex right there. Keeping it tidy with Jacob Hubbard, and Hubbard's trying to hold on for this two spot. Maybe set himself up for a good position to win tonight's Triple Crown. Because so far, it's been all Braden Castellaneta, and he is going to get the white flag this next time by. Devin Davis was trying to move to the inside line to get out of the way. Didn't realize Castellaneta was going to go there, so it got a little bit tight. But one lap to go coming up for Castellaneta, and man, oh man, he is really put a class on the field here in this one coming up and catching those guys passing them and taking off yeah sorry i'm just kind of checking in with Braden carter still down in 17th place that's a gonna be kind of crazy for uh for how the overall works out right here but the good news is if you're casting that at eagland or hubbard laying lights or any of the guys really in the top five even chase b for zaka as well going back deeper all you need is two more good races and you can have the overall here tonight so that's the bonus of a triple crown right there. Stay up around that top five and have a, you know, maybe two out of the three really, really good finishes and you could be taking this thing home. And Casaneta's saying, no, I'm going to do it the easy way and I'm going to try to go 1-1-1 one, one, one tonight. So yeah. Putting it down and just laying the law on everybody else in the field here tonight. Braden Castellaneta, one turn to go. He's going to tuck in behind teammate Tanner Rogers and bring it on home. Braden Castellaneta, main event one winner in Indianapolis. What a great ride for the 22. Eaglin gets up into second on the final lap, so Hubbard must have had a late crash in this one. He is going to have to be uh, furious with that late mistake because he'll settle for third. T Lang looks like fourth is all his. Leitzel in fifth, putting uh, Carter a lap down. Carter's going to repass him, but Carter is still a lap down. Going to get. Oh, Leitzel goes outside and down in the tough blocks. And that's going to give fifth to Chase Blakely, I believe, in and out of the last turn. These guys still dealing with lapped riders. I think that's Evan Vanderkoy just ahead of them. And Carter ends up 16th. But Blakely inside the top five in main one. Lights ends up sixth. Seventh for LeClaire out of fifth place in the LCQ is wild. Kevin Frazaka eighth. Evan Holt with a solid ride ends up in ninth. And Noah Bendis rounds out 
the top 10. Pablo Vial 11th, and everybody behind that was a lap down. Jack Haley, Devin Davis, Jackson, Stevenson, Carter, Vanderkoy, Pichon, Paul Tharp, Rogers, Speck, and myself in warm-up. All right, so now that we are done with this one, take a quick look at penalties, and nothing really changed. I'm going to get out of the game and rejoin so that we can see Seth Carr's skins rolling into main event number two of the 250s. I didn't even get to remind you. You didn't get to remind me because I was on top Shout of Shout out to we, everyone. We keep it real. Our boy C. Heckman. A um, couple other people reminded me to remind you, but you know, you don't need it. You don't need us. As shown, you know, when I'm not here, you're perfect, Kellen, in every way. Thanks, A. Wood. You're welcome. Appreciate the moral support. No problem. That's what I'm here for. That is what you're here for, is the moral support. And the uh, drop the M. Drop the M? Uh-huh. Oh, God. <laughs> Goodness graciousness. I felt like that one would have been, I couldn't have said it myself. That would have been. <laughs> hey, would you rookie? Oh, rookie. Rookie move, man. Let's see. I, we got to make sure that your microphone comes back. Sorry, it's not on. So now we got to. Yellow. Hey, oh, there we go. It's this the blanket. Yeah, the blanket caught it. Um, Got too excited there. While we uh, wait to load into the 250 main event too, we'll head back to our intermission screen here. So, yeah, um, seeing a couple of people mention it in chat right now. Um, I announced today, of course, that I will no longer be working for RacerX, RacerX Online or RacerX Illustrated. Um, but I'm not leaving the industry. I wish I would have said that in the post to some shape or form. It's not that I'm leaving the industry or not going to be working in moto. I'm simply going somewhere else to do my journalistic work. And I will announce that tomorrow or maybe Friday. Uh, but very excited about my next opportunity and, and what I have going on right there. So Big thank you to RacerX for giving me the chance in the first place. And uh, seriously, can't thank them, Jason Wygant, Davey Coombs, and, and everyone there enough for all the support they've given me over the past four, four and a half years. But um, yeah, needed to make a change and uh, you guys will know soon enough. So I'm staying in the industry. I'm still going to be covering the sport. Not much is changing for me in terms of what I'm doing for coverage. It's just somewhere else. So chill down. I can't believe you're joining the pony pod. I know. It's crazy. Golly, man. I got to grow moving to Texas pony and everything like that. Uh, golly. Um, yeah. Oh, man. LVK. That's my I didn't make it on the way here, but I uh, can't wait for listening to LVK podcast, which is going nowhere. Uh, I'm going to listen to that on the drive home. It's kind of what I do. Hopefully, oh, hopefully it's not a three and a half hour drive to Corona this time. Yeah. Sorry about last week. Uh, for those of you that don't know, uh, a would left my house. After we, we stayed, had, we stayed a little late. We too. stayed a little late. You had in and out. Um, yeah, it was it was a great time. And yeah. then got stuck in traffic for three hours because the road was closed. It was yeah. It was. Oh, we got a visitor on the. A couple of people died. Band -Aid? Not very happy. You gonna talk to the people. Got a new band aid. Got a new band aid. Yeah, right on. New band aid. Yeah. Got anything else? A puppy head. What about the you slippery what? fish? Can you sing us the tuna fish song? Tuna fish, tuna fish, swimming in the water. Tuna fish, tuna fish, swimming in the water. A tuna fish, a tuna fish, swimming in the water. A tuna fish. Tuna fish. Yeah. Woo! Well done. All right, Holly. Love you. Because you just took a bath. No, why is your hand so little? Because you're still young, sweetheart. Oh. You're I thought she said hair so wet. You know, it's uh, well, it's not your own kid. It's like gibberish. There we go. Good, Good night, night, Holly. Bye. 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 All right. Love our halftime performance that we it's did every honestly, night. Here. It's, it's like we really got to like pause the show, give her her whole uh, spiel that she gets to run. And we got a song tonight. Another song. Yeah. I mean, she was really practicing earlier and I, I felt like 
it needed to happen for the stream. You know, you mm-hmm. can't let the can't let the fans go on without hearing that. Yep. And now um, you know, tuna we're, fish swimming in the ocean, keeping it real. Yeah, dude. Oh, so it's like a 40 minute drive from your house to mine at like at the end of the night. Right. Yep. So I'm like, oh, dude, I'm just going to rip, go 80 the whole time. And I'm like south of Indian truck trail, like maybe 15 minutes to my house. And I'm like almost there. And I see red lights and I just stop. By, mind you, I was on E, like gaslight on. And I was like, I can get home, though, get there in the morning. Um, We were like moving a little bit at first, then dead stop. Uh, it was like a five car accident. There was like six, like six cop cars, six ambulances, five fire trucks. But I saw the coroner van too. It was like multi cars. A couple people died. It was really sad. But oh. man, I was just, I ended up, I was low on gas. So I had to turn my car off. And then I was like listening to your podcast on the battery. But then my truck is like, hey, start the car because the battery's getting low because you're using the speakers, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, well, I can't do that. So I just had the truck off. I was sitting there. Luckily, I was bundled up kind of nice and warm and just, uh, yeah, pretty much watched YouTube for three hours, got on the road, but three and a half hours for a 35-mile drive. It was tough. Tough, yeah. It was tough. Crazy. Um, but we're here. Yep. Shout out to Jake Spies. Uh, he is the reason we're in a holding pattern as I load the game back in. Normally, if I can have the game loaded and the track loaded and everything, all I have to do is actually load the bikes, which still takes a long time, but it doesn't have to load everything at once. So because I had to go out and get Seth's car's skins, and now we're back in again, that's what we're just waiting for, is my game to load again. So apologies. We're almost there for 250 Main 2 coming up. What? And uh, we'll get the gate dropped and get racing again here shortly. Let's remind you what happened in uh, 250 Moto Number 1. It was Johnny Padani, Seth Carr, Rasmus Balzer, Tom Quino, Rogan, McIntosh. Okay, can I get... Can we get in now? Is it going to load? I don't know why it took so long to load this last time on reload, but hopefully we're good. Um, <clears throat> but Quino, R- McIntosh inside the top five. Holyhead, Gummison, Carter, Cooper, D Mills in the top 10. There we go. Okay, well, finally we're in. Apologies. Everyone in the chat in game right now is probably MRFing me right now. So shout out to those people. And uh, yeah, main two coming up. Awood, Design Lab Co. Whole shot. Give it to me. Well, we're looking at him right now. I like the looks of Johnny Padani. Got off to a great start in the first one. The tsunami had a rough week last week. So. Hoping to bounce back. I'm sticking with Seth Crotty. We're riding the train all night long. Crotty, I mean, for me, I'm gonna. I got a, I got a uh, Heat three, a Gangbang three pick. Gangbang three pick. Mm. Crotty too hotty, and we got Seth Car's skins. We're dialed, people. We are ready to drop the gate here for main number two of the 250 East Triple Crown from Indianapolis. Balls are way up the inside. Who else is in the middle? We're off and running. Who's going to get that whole she yeah. Trying to see who gets there first. I saw a nose. Oh, oh we got guys going down. deep. And it is Johnny Padani. A Wood. Car two went, for three tonight. Let's go. Andrew and car, Wood. car went down. I think I'm 99% sure I saw. Mm. No? There's a oh, red there plate is. there in P3. All right. I thought I saw a red plate flipping. <laughs> Someone went down. Johnny Padani, though. Yeah, off to a good start. Look at us go. Man. Johnny Padani, he he got a good start though in the first one, and he went down. Seth Crotty in tenth, your pick, and a little bit could be a little bit a little better. Could be better, yeah, but it's not mid. too bad. So Johnny Padani leading here once again, picking up right where he left off from that first main event where he picked up the win. Max Twalik in the two spot, Jet White Drizzle Holyhead in third, Balls are up to fourth, McPherson in fifth. So what happened to Seth Carr? He has slipped all the way back into the nine spot, I believe this is, for the 15 ride. He has got to try to pick it up and turn it around, work his way back towards the front after that second place finish in the opening main event. Battle for second is on. Jet Holyhead and Max Twalik juggling positions right now. 33 in front of 34 at the moment, but Twalik trying to shuffle it back in the favor of the 34 machine and move into second place. Good fight here between these two. Yeah, and you got to remember our boy, our boy White Drizzle was in fourth place for a long time in that first one and dropped back to sixth place uh, near the end, as well as Twalik was up front for a little while, but then had a big crash, went down, and was never able to kind of 
uh, get himself back up there. So we'll see if Holyhead, uh, being up front from the start here, can just kind of keep keep going, keep pushing, and make his way uh, into the lead here. Uh, you know, he had a little bit of a worse start in the first one. But Balzer as well, who made his way through the pack in fourth place, right behind these two. And uh, he's got a lot less room to make up than he did in the first gangbang. Good fight here from the front four riders as they stay nose to tail in the opening few laps. We're on lap number three now. Twilight, a little case right there. And Balzer on the one is closing up. By the way, mm. Seth Carr has slipped back to 13th, and he is in a dogfight in that battle back there for all those positions trying to hold on to it. Twilight looks like he has found the groove a little bit again as he closes back up to the rear tire of Holyhead. If you're Padani in this situation, all you can hope for is that these guys get into a fight and allow you to open up the gap because right now it's still close, but it could get a lot bigger in a hurry with that gap out front if these guys battle each other. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's you're you're definitely always wanting to move forward. You know, if you're these guys two, three, four, you want to move forward and not really get stuck kind of battling with each other when you know you have someone up front that can pull away. So these guys really need to kind of settle into their own race pace. And they actually, besides Twalik making the mistake here, jumping off the track, Woo! look at that, balls are up. Ooh, very close to him. They jump side by side, not able to make the pass. But man, they were actually just separated enough to where I feel like you're not racing each other. You're doing your own thing. But Twalik made that mistake on his own. So maybe pressure getting to him. Uh, after another good start, don't want to kind of fall down and uh, get put back again. Yep, Balzer definitely had a couple mistakes right there as he tried to avoid hitting Twalik, who just rejoined the track. So it is still really close at the front. Johnny Badani brings us down the start straight, then Jet Holyhead in second place, Max Twalik in third, and Balzer with a little slide out, still holding on for fourth. Maxime Vanderbeek just tucked a front end at the end of the whoops. He is in fifth. Garrett Hollenbeck has moved up into the sixth spot on the 742. Seventh for Tom Quinnell right there on the 85 as uh, eighth now is actually Max Wilczek moving up to eighth. Doyle ninth, McIntosh tenth, Partolo eleventh, and now Carr has found his way to twelfth actually. So he's going backwards a little bit trying to right the ship as he closes up on D-Mills for eleventh over the finish line jump. Not the ride Seth Carr was hoping for in this main event, but he's going to get a freebie as his teammate went down right there. I think that was Partolo and the battles continue on throughout the field. I think the fight, though, is going to stay out front, man. I think these guys are going to continue battling each other. And speaking of battling, Balzer just made the pass on Twalik. He got down the outside uh, across the start straight. Twalik uh, went to the inside to defend, but Balzer still made the pass anyway. And just like in that first main event we saw, Andrew, once Balzer gets clean air, man, he's able to run some burner lap times. Yeah, and uh, the lap before, uh, Padani did drop, drop his fast or the fastest lap, but yeah, Balzer did uh, did make a pass there, but he did lose some time from having to battle for a little bit. So now it's time for him. You've got the clear air. Drops, drop your lap times and show these guys what you can do. This is uh, probably about the time he picked it up in the last race from the halfway mark all the way on. He started to really kind of get it together um, and show some speed to kind of move towards the front. So hopefully he can do it again. Um, interesting, too. He's, he's doing a lot of outside lines and flowing, carrying a lot of speed. And then interesting to see the Padani way of doing things where he's been kind of jumping across the corner with the pixie stick and doing a little bit different lines than people, kind of keeping things tight. So uh, it, it is fun to see the different approach that these racers have uh, to the same race in the same racetrack. Yeah, I think, you know, we kind of saw that playing out between Balzer and Padani in the first main event as well. Kind of the same, you know, uh, format i guess in that padani was trying to go to the inside lines in a lot of places using those insides to shorten up the track balls are using the outside to flow and both of them kind of worked out evenly in terms of uh, total lap time so there it is padani again still going inside uh ooh, jumps off the track right there that's going to cost him a little bit of time having to do that double double option and down goes holyhead at some point because balzer has moved up into second place so holyhead who was in second is now behind Balzer, and that is a couple seconds advantage there for Balzer already. So I think maybe just a slide out there for Holyhead, but once again, Balzer taking advantage of these small mistakes these guys are having. Yeah, it could have been a small mistake, case something, off track excursion, but um, man, just like that, you're, you're leaving the room open, and now Balzer, look at the speed he's going through that sand section, jumping through the whole thing as we go on board with him. Ran a 51-3, his best lap last time around, and maybe he's going to try to answer back and do it again. 
It seems like when Balzer gets on fire for a couple laps, he really is. Look at that going Whoa. over quad right there to the outside. Off track a little bit, but still able to get the triple on and hit this big rhythm. Man, it looks like he is pushing, but is he actually even gaining time? Doesn't seem like it. It was 3.1, now it's 3.4. That might have been the cleanest track reentry through tough blocks I've ever seen as well. Landing off the track and sliding through the blocks to make that corner and still triple on was greasy as hell for Balzer. So 51-3, but Donnie goes 51-3 as well. Balzer this time around goes 51-7, so it was a 4 tenth split right there. Balls are still just trying to eat that gap down. This feels like a replay of what we saw in the first main event with these two happening again as we close up in the final three minutes of this race. Yeah, and it's just, man, it's so crazy to watch him do this and uh, drop the time down a little bit here, but you just see how hard it is for these guys to to be on top of their game. Balzer is absolutely laying it down, doing some crazy stuff right here. Oh, look at that, a mistake in the rhythm. So not only did Balzer go. nail his, uh, Padani missed his rhythm as well, so that's down to like a one second gap right here. And over the wall in the whoop section, this is going to be a huge part right here. Who can get through it closer? Both of them tripling through and then tucking to that inside to get that rut clean. Padani laying it in, kind of sliding back onto the start straight, and it is on for the win here in main two of the 250 East Division in Indianapolis. Less than a second in it between Johnny Padani and defending champion Rasmus Balzer. Lap traffic coming up as a well going to be a factor in this fight as we're down under two minutes and a lap left to go who's got the advantage here we're once again going to see how those lines play out but donnie kind of misses his balzer goes over does he get the quad no he's going to settle with a table over single but now look at balzer doubling through the corner he's going to pull up alongside we're side by side in the rhythm section oh my goodness they almost come together but donnie defends the line balzer squares it back off is not going to go for the pass they both go to the outside right here and the battle continues into the whoop section yeah, man, what an amazing thing right there. Look at that. Balzer's going, blitzing the whole way to the outside. Didn't want to follow. Padani jumped all the way to the inside. Didn't really change his line. But how impressive is that from Balzer to go and hasn't done it all race? He's been doing a triple over quad line that we've seen in the uh, on-off section back there that you see. And he goes and just switches up to the line that we've seen Padani do all the last two races. And Balzer hasn't used once. And he goes and absolutely nails it, almost makes a pass. So we'll see what they do right here. Do they trade lines or follow the same thing? There's a jump across. There's a jump across from Balzer, but he hangs it a little bit and loses some time. Yeah, but he's able to get the on-off clean still and doesn't lose all too much time, even though that mistake was a pretty hefty one for that case. So still under a second as we head into the whoops. And once again, I think these guys are just going to miss time. There's still 30 seconds on the clock. We're looking like we're crossing once again at about 15 seconds to go on the clock, maybe about 20 this time as there it is 20 seconds left on the clock right now 18 or so seconds left on the clock as they cross this time so two laps to go Padani trying to hold on another charge from Rasmus Balzer and uh, Padani I mean overall wise still will look good ahead of Balzer in the overall picture but if he can go 1-1 to start things off he sets him up he sets himself up so well to cruise in that final main event and try to win this overall here tonight. It's really up to Balzer to try to make it happen. Padani, a mistake. Riders coming from off track. And once again, we're still almost bar to bar through this rhythm section. Balls are going to go to the outside. Padani defends it. Balls are squares Get it up and gets it. Lapper. Tom Quino on the 85 was not paying attention to those guys battling in front of him and gets in the way and takes Balzer down. So there goes the race right there because Padani's going to get the white flag this time by. And it looks like he's going to be able to cruise this thing home. That's a, a real bummer there because uh, Cano, Cano knew knew they were there, had the blue bar going through that rhythm section. Um, in my opinion, that, that was completely intentional, cut across the inside, and just really a bummer to see someone get involved in the race like that when we, for the second time in three laps, were able to see the two leaders go bar to bar down that rhythm section and see if they can make something happen here. Uh, Padani goes ahead and gets a gift right there. Uh, Balzer is still at least able to hold on to the second place position. 
but uh, not the best way we want to see uh, someone kind of get a win and, and someone not even have the chance to battle for that to the to the checker flag. Yeah, tough break as well for Seth Carr, who just goes a lap down in this main event. He was second in the first one. Oh, and he gets into the back of uh, Padani right there, so almost caused a little bit last lap drama. And it looks like Carr is going to fall outside of the top 15 in this one. So Johnny Padani takes it. Two for two tonight here as into the final corner, Balzer and Holyhead tees up Balzer, but Holyhead goes down and Balzer gets a break on that one, stays on two wheels and crosses the line in second place. It is uh, Holyhead crossing the line third. And then look at this fight all the way to the line. Chwalik, actually, he's just a lap driver. Wait a minute. So Seth Carr was lapped, but he's still fifth? Is that right? Or someone else was using his skins. I am so confused. So Seth Carr ends up fifth, Vanderbeek sixth, Gummison seventh, Hollenbeck eighth, McIntosh ninth, Partolo tenth. Who was using Seth Carr's skins? Unless he just had the greatest comeback ever. Oh, someone's using Balzer's 1E skin. Excuse me. I was just uh, looking at the red plates. Cody Coop. So that's the red plate I saw flying in the first corner. Is this Sam Weigman for real, or who is using those skins because it's really annoying uh, but either way it is going to be Padani taking two for two Balzer now second overall on a 3-2 score so it's Padani Balzer, Holyhead the top three standings as it is right now after this one which funnily enough that's how they just finished in this race going into the final main event for Johnny Padani he only needs to finish two spots behind Rasmus Balzer or better, and this is his night in Indianapolis. Yeah, that's the good thing about coming out and uh, going 1-1 right here, especially in a class where not that there's not competition because we know, you know, Seth Carr not, not getting good starts, all that stuff, but knowing that going 1-1 and knowing that you, uh, you only have to get, you know, third place if he wins or a certain position behind a certain racer, uh, can definitely really help you out, um, especially if you do get another good start. You know, okay, this guy's in fourth or fifth. I can still go out and win this thing by myself, but worst case scenario, I only have to finish within two of him. So um, kind of frees him up a little bit to relax, which is which is kind of nice. Yep, definitely. Uh, so here we go, 450 main two coming up, and uh, we'll get back to that 250 action in just a minute. Looks like the server chat's about to be litty because of that Quino situation right there. Uh, curious to see what those guys have to say. Uh, so reminder what happened in our first 450 race here tonight. Braden Castellaneta took the win ahead of Colby Eaglin, Jacob Hubbard, Tyler Lang, Chase Blakely, Logan Leitzel, Alexis Eclair, Kevin Frazaka, Evan Holt, and Noah Bendis inside of the top 10. Braden Carter, our points leader and defending champion, straight up just had a bad race. Like I, I don't know how to describe it other than that. He was up front, went down. And it was his own doing to crash. he went down from like third to like 13th. Yeah. So that's his fault. And then from there, it's it's maybe he's thinking in his head, he's got to be thinking short race, got to get up front. I still want to win this. I want to give myself a chance to win. And I bet you he just got a little too overexcited and tried to rush something, you know, with the, the guys that he's racing in midfield. I know they're top 20 guys and they're some of the best in the world. Everyone who races here is best in the world at this game but they're nowhere near to his speed. So when you're four or five seconds faster than someone, it's kind of really difficult to, to race around them. And there's so many things that can happen. You drop back down to 21st, 22nd, then you're even more mad. And I think the mistakes just kind of keep coming up and coming up. And that's why he had such a terrible finish in that first one. Yes, indeed. So we'll see if he can turn it around in main two and maybe provide some fireworks for this overall because He's kind of out of it now, but he could be a spoiler as well as Castaneda, Eaglin, Hubbard, Lang. Those guys are trying to go for it with consistent results. Carter sneaks in with a couple wins here and really throws a wrench in the program for those gentlemen. So 450 main two coming up here in Indianapolis. We are halfway through our main events here tonight, but we're already more than halfway through the night show as we head into our uh, final hour, I think, of what we'll see for racing action. And this should be a pretty good little battle here in this main event based on what we saw in the first one. At the very least, what we saw in the first one is that uh, consistency is going to be needed, man. These guys are uh, so tough if they stay on two wheels for the entirety of the main event. And if it happens again, man, they're uh, going to make it interesting for us. 
yeah, if you're getting a good start and staying up, that's you're guaranteed a good finish, especially on the track where so many people are making so many mistakes. Um, this one is, yeah, the racing has definitely surprised me and brought a little bit more than I anticipated, uh, which has been really, really cool. Um, a lot of a lot of tight races happening too. Uh, maybe not too much separation until someone gets exploded by the track, but it's cool because we've seen these four four or five man battles, you know, all the way from the LCQs. Um, we see kind of the groups one through three, four through seven, stuff like that, where um, people are kind of together battling for position. All right. Well, we did not get a Design Lab co whole shot pick, so we're running Hubbard. it back. We got Leclerc versus Hubbard into turn number one. Who's going to get it? We're off and running for 450 main number two. Hubbard versus Leclerc going side by side. Who's going to get around the corner first? It's going to be Hubbard again. Two for two for the 78 machine. Oh, and oh, Leclerc gets Chase hit B. from behind. I think that may have been Blakely. Carter's up here. Lang has got another good start. I think he is in third on the five. So now we get to see Hubbard versus Carter, the two teammates. These guys are tight, hang out a lot together, and they put on a show for us last year at Anaheim. Are they going to put on a show for us here in Indy? Let's find out. Oh, yeah, these guys toy like a tiger, and maybe we can see Braden Carter feeling himself after a great start racing around with his buddy and teammate, and I think this is where we're going to see him more comfortable, and we might see something special from Braden Carter this race. He's going to go inside here, but look at that. All the way to the outside, Jacob Hubbard doesn't really lose anything. It's just what he, uh, what he likes to do. The only thing is if it's not your friend right behind you, someone could probably go over and uh, block off your kind of route for you there. But Jacob Hubbard, Braden Carter off to a great start, but they do have some competition pretty close behind them. And that's Tyler Lang again. Oh, Lang. oh and he's down after another great start. Castellaneta goes by. Leitzel's through. A lot of the familiar faces that we saw in the first main event are up here, uh, despite that crash from Leclerc kind of hindering things going into the second turn. So Castellaneta, our main one winner, is hanging out, hoping these two up front get into it. And the battle is really on, man. Carter is putting the heat on Hubbard out front. This is going to be a fun one in these first couple of laps to see how they kind of deal with each other because they're definitely talking to each other in the same Discord. They do that for every single race. Hubbard swings way wide. Carter's trying to defend, and Carter's going to go to the lead with that inside line. Yeah, and I think uh, it does benefit them racing so close together because they do have different lines there, but that's not Hubbard letting Braden go by any means, but Braden probably saying, hey, man, I got a good drive. I'm up the inside. And then Hubbard can see him and know that he has it. He did that that wheelie, not to didn't slow down or anything, just kind of being like, "Let's go, me and my boy up here," you know. And he knows he he had that pass, uh, or that pass was made on him. And these two can just go back to racing. But man, if Hubbard gets back on Carter, you will not see him uh, scared to make a move back on Carter just because they're friends. They're still going to race each other uh, to the extreme. Yeah, I feel like Carter is pissed off after that first main event, man. The way things went for him to finish 16th, he looks like he is a man possessed out front in this main event because it's been not even a full lap and he's put two seconds into Hubbard uh, in P2. So now Hubbard has to go back to the defensive mode because this is really the battle for the overall right here, Castellaneta versus Hubbard. Hubbard was third in the first main, Castellaneta took the win. Now they are second and third on the racetrack respectively. And this could set us up for a dogfight between the two of them going to the final main if they stay this way. But I don't think they're staying this way. This is going to be a close fight between these as well as Hubbard misses the triple a little bit. And here comes Castellaneta trying to make a pass. Yeah, Braden is just on his game tonight, man, trying to make a statement. Uh, and really, I would I would think he wants to get up uh, to Leclerc or uh, Braden Carter up front. As you see him hit that quad right there, it doesn't really do much difference. But sometimes... Even though it's a bigger line, some riders are still a little bit more comfortable for them, or it can set them up for the double in. So it kind of changes uh, changes the way you enter that corner. You know, you're not exactly following the same line. So even if it's not working as far as gaining speed, I do think we might see Castellaneta continue to use that quad line as long as he physically can. Yeah. So Hubbard got a small gap because of that slight bobble from Castellaneta. How about Logan Leitzel as well? He was really strong in the first main event with a sixth. He's now in a position for third overall with six four scores as he runs in third place right here. This is by far the best we've seen Logan ride all year because he's made a few main events, but this is not the same Logan Leitzel that we saw early in the season. Hey, you think he's just feeling himself after Birmingham? Maybe. Just knows he's like, I'm that freaking guy. Let me go out here. And he used to be a guy. He was a champion. He's got that number three. He took that thing away from Dennis Fjellberg and said, 
This is my turn now, and this is the first time we've seen him with any really good performances Ooh. here as he wrestles that bike beneath him <laughs> like a little bucking Bronco there, yeah. able to hold on. Keeping an eye on uh, Hubbard and Castellaneta up the road as Castellaneta goes 12 o'clock on us over the finish line for some reason. Not sure what he did wrong going into that, but he had gotten right up behind Castellaneta into the wall jump. They almost hit each other. You could see it from the onboard perspective of Leitzel there. And uh, now these guys, man, Carter's gone. I thought that for a second I was like, maybe he crashed. So I switched up to him, but he's already got a five second lead on these guys as the battle for second continues. Hubbard going back to that quad, going a little bit long. Castellaneta switches back to the 3-3. Three, three, and there's still just about a second between these two as they fight it out for what could be the overall win by the end of the night. Yeah, these guys, uh, definitely, I feel like this is it. Carter's just trying to get himself. Ooh. Carter can go 1-1, one, one, and we'll still have a great night here of racing, I think, and, and see some battles that are really close as far as position down to the line for the overall. So that's, I guess, entertaining because we can let Carter still get a couple wins on the night, but <laughs> not really take over and ruin all the fun for everyone. So, man, Hubbard versus Casa Nether right here. Casa Nether looks like he missed something a little bit there in that rhythm. Hubbard's going to gain a little bit of speed, and he's right back on the wheel. Haven't seen too big of dualies yet, too, and we need to get some before the night is over. Yeah, I think the problem with the dualies is both the triple and the finish line jump. These guys are trying to tuck to the inside in a 90 right after it, so it's not like they're tossing it, setting up for a bull berm or anything like that. They're just trying to get that perfect scrub so they can arc the corner, which is why we don't see the dualies, but we are seeing a sick dually battle between these two, man. Castellaneta made that pass on Hubbard right here last time. By now, Hubbard goes through the tough blocks and cuts the track. Is, is the timing gate's going to pick him up because he did go through two of them right there, but yeah, it does. So he's going to get some penalties for a cut right there uh, on his total race time, but settles back in behind Castellaneta and keeps the fight alive. Devin Davis is all over Logan Leitzel right now in a battle for fourth and talk about the best we've seen Leitzel ride all year. This is perhaps the best Devin Davis has ridden all year, and these guys are having a great battle for this four position. Yeah, it is, and, and he uh, was off to a great start, actually, in the first uh, race, and I was kind of keeping an eye on him, and I saw him uh, explode and get together with someone, so a bummer for him. You know it's hard to come back from that, but, man, he's. I wonder where he started from in this race. Uh, didn't really see him off the rip to see how far he's moved up, but he looks great right here because Logan Leitzel has been good and keeping it close, and Devin Davis looks like he's pretty spicy there. Blows a little bit of a corner there, but so does the rider behind him. So he's not losing anything as far as people gaining on him. But And will Devin Davis be able to make it up and make a move on Logan Leitzel? This would easily be his best finish of the year as far as a single race. Yeah, he is mixing it up out front. It is Tharp on the 23 who's hanging out back here behind these guys. And then Frank Jackson bringing up the caboose of kind of this front train here. That is the first seven riders separated by 16 seconds. Pablo Vial is in eighth with Evan Holt. Another good ride for Holtzy. He is in ninth. Unfortunately, he's looking at uh, well, 9 12 right now, but he's up to ninth again. So I think he's going to move up in the overall results here. But he was 12th overall with a 9 12. Leclerc hanging out right behind him, rounding out our top 10 positions. Uh, Colby Eaglin's having an awful race right now in 16th as we go back to our leader just past the halfway point of this one. Brayden Carter, man, he is just putting burner after burner down. 51 flat, 50.5 is his best. Almost a 10 second lead and no one's crashed behind him. Like this is just a, a straight up pull away and show him what you're made of kind of ride out of the champ. Yeah, I think this is what we're used to seeing, right? When Braden does get a start, no crashes. Watch over the bars right now. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, commentator's curse, hopefully not coming tonight. But yeah, Braden Carter, top three start. Uh, you know, go up, get in the lead early and show everyone what you could do. That's that's what he's there for. That's why he's multi, multi -time, cha time champion. And uh, he's going to be going for the world record uh, wins probably here shortly if he keeps continuing the domination in Supercross at least uh, that we've seen from him for the last couple years. But man, look at that. 50.3 and made a couple mistakes which is just crazy because I saw a couple uh, in that half lap that we watched him and he's still dropping faster lap times than everyone else on the track. Yeah, this is an unbelievable ride now. Almost 11 seconds out in front. Still Castellaneta, still Hubbard battling for second place. Man, these guys have been separated by a straw for most of this race and now Leitzel just went down or no that was uh, sorry not Leitzel his teammate Stevenson behind him uh, a lap down just went down caught me off guard but happens to the best of us so Hubbard 
I, I don't really know what to make of this battle between these two because it doesn't seem like there's really any difference in what they're doing at this point. They're both kind of hitting the same lines for the most part inside. Hubbard's still blitzing to the outside occasionally, but look at Castaneda. He's blitzing, but this time it's to the inside. So I don't know, man. Like, what's going to happen in this battle in these final couple of minutes? It's tough to tell. I mean, I think maybe we might have just seen it right there. It's going to take one small mistake from one of these guys. I know they do have a different rhythm that they... Uh, Castaneda likes to quad in that long section, um, and Hubbard doesn't really do that, but I haven't really seen Castaneda doing it too much recently. I think it's going to be one small mistake. Someone barely loses the rear end or barely cases a jump or something like that. Um, you know, it could be a Carter? small that swap is. through the whoops. Oh, Carter did go down, and so that's actually going to let them uh, be a little bit closer here. But, yeah, it, still for the guys behind them, I don't really know. And there's a small mistake by Hubbard, actually, that yep. opens it back up. So now Castellaneta is looking at the possibility of sneaking a race win off of Carter here if there's another mistake for the champ. As it's a Phil Ski and Snowboard 1-2-3, they are laying it down. D. Davis has made it into fourth. He has gotten around Logan Leitzel. Leitzel's still hanging out with Frank Jackson in a battle for fifth. And Jackson just goes right over the bars, just decided his head needed to be on the ground <laughs> as he just went right up and over the bars, <laughs> trying to find this battle between Tharp and Leitzel because that's a good one right there as well. And now they're right behind Devin Davis, who is still in the fourth spot. Man, good fight in either the fourth spot or the lead battle because you don't know what's going to happen. It's still Carter ahead of Castellaneta, but I feel like Carter's another mistake away from things getting away from him here. We've seen it in the past couple rounds where things snowball a little bit when he makes one early mistake and things rile him up a little bit. So trying to calm down and win this thing with a few laps to go is the one. Yeah, I honestly don't think it's going to happen, but we'll have to see. We don't have too much time left. And uh, Devin Davis actually dropped back to fifth. I think Leitzel might have got him for fourth place if I just saw a crossing uh, timing. So, yeah, Logan Leitzel did get back by, and D. Davis dropped back. Um, so they kind of traded spots there. But this is really the only kind of battle uh, on the track right now, D. Davis. I think that's Leitzel a lapper that was in between. Leitzel down. So Devin Davis back into fourth place. LeClaire, Leclerc, after an early crash, all the way back up to six, seventh. Seven? I think seven. he's right behind Leitzel, who is now sixth. Yes. And then uh, Tharp, Rogers, Holtzy, the top 10. So this is a, a good fight here between a couple single-digit dudes with Leclerc tripling to the inside of Leitzel, not able to make that pass just yet. Davis still holding on to fourth just ahead of Frank Jackson. In fact, their fight might even be better between the two Cowie riders, Underground RC and the DX3 Cowie of Devin Davis, Underground RC machine. And Frank Jackson just goes down, as I say that, out of the five spot. So now that moves Lights up to fifth, and then he goes off the track, and Leclerc goes to fifth. These guys really can't quite put it all together, but Devin Davis is having a hell of a good ride in the four spot. Let's see if he can hold on for one more lap. Castellaneta trying to make a last-ditch effort on his teammate Carter, but I think Carter's going to bring this thing home for us. Yeah, and besides... Uh yeah, under my experience, I'm normally the guy who's had a ride like Leitzel had. Oh, I was so good up front for so long. And then you drop back and then it's like, oh, how the hell did Leclerc get from 20th to 4th? And then why did I start in 3rd and drop back? But, man, a great ride, statement ride uh, coming back from Carter. And we'll see if he can do this again in the 3rd one, right? Yeah, I mean, like I said, it looked like you rode pissed off in this one. And it comes to fruition for him as he wins 450 main event number 2, the champ back at the point and look at that Hubbard does get around Castellaneta on the last lap he gets second Castellaneta gets third that should keep them one point apart heading into the final race Leclerc versus Davis for fourth in the whoops on the final lap Davis sent it he goes through the tough locks kind of rides it a little bit Leclerc cuts across D Davis does he go for it into the last turn he settles behind him and it looks like D Davis is going to be content with fifth in this one as he crosses just ahead of Leitzel seven tenths down on the three machine Rogers Jackson coming to the line with Lang right there that was a good fight as well those two and Holtzy Beats out Tharp to the line as well. For Zaka, looks like he is going to be P12. Yes, P12 for, for Zaka. Vial. And then Eagland, way down here in 14th, a lap down. Let's see if cuts change any of this up at all. Uh, looks like it actually kind of all stayed the same, which is crazy for how close it was. But Carter back on top in this one. But Castellaneta leads him by one point going into the final race of the night. Yeah, something to note. I think that says Hubbard 
2.24 seconds or three. Well, remember early in the main he well, cut went that through that yeah, yeah that corner. It's cool. It, that's kind of the the one downside of if you do something like that, and there are timing gates too close together. The game does the math that you went through those two timing gates faster than your average for the rest of the race or everyone's average, I think. Um, and kind of assigns you those cuts. That's why they're different uh, times for different people. Um, depending on how fast you went through it, the thing is he did stop and let the other rider go by, which is great for him and great sportsmanship, right? If that happened in real life, you wouldn't get a penalty. You just get going, right? You accidentally cut 10 feet off the corner. But in sim, no matter if you let the guy go by or not, um, you're still getting hit with that time penalty at the end of the race. So honestly, besides getting that position, it's almost like you should just like keep going because you're like, well, I, I, I got the cut. It's going to penalize me this way, but he did the right thing. Uh, let the uh, Castaneda, I think, at the time go by and um, yeah, gets hit a little bit later, but doesn't lose his spot. So still finishes second. Yep, definitely a uh, interesting dynamic that we've got built into this final race. Carter looks like he is fired up to win the final race. By the way, Carter, seventh overall uh, heading into the final race, and he's 13 back of Castellaneta. So pretty much, I don't want to say impossible, but pretty Out impossible of... that he gets Castellaneta for the win, and then he'd have to beat Hubbard by 12 points as well. So yeah, pretty difficult to say that that's going to happen. Uh, but you, I guess you never really know. We'll see what happens when we get to 450 main number three. Time for the final 250 main event. Johnny Padani sitting on two points, rolling into this final race of the night for the 250 class. Five points for Rasmus Balzer, eight points for Seth Carr, nine points for Jet Holyhead, and 14 points for Jared Gummison is what we're looking at in terms of those battles. I'm um, trying to get live timing to load again for me but uh for whatever reason it's not working yeah mine's i can load it but it'll freeze it won't update oh there we go now it just loaded once again for me so there we go um yeah that's what we're looking at rolling into the final race of the night here padani balls or car holyhead gummison is what we're uh keeping an eye on all right live timing is back and good to go there uh, I was going to look at one other thing. I'm trying to remember what. What? What? Oh, I remember. So, a little bit of a backstory that we're keeping a track of here. Jeremy Smith is the all-time 250 Supercross winner in this game. He has won 10 250 Race Factor Gaming North America Supercross main events. He's a two-time champion, West and East in 13 and 14, I believe. I think he did West in 13, 14 was East. He's hmm. all-time 250 winner. Rasmus Balzer, last year's uh, 250 East champion, is on nine career wins. And he is trying to tie Jeremy Smith tonight on the all-time wins list. And he could do it if he beats Johnny Padani by three positions and potentially wins this final race. So that's a stat we're keeping track of and seeing if Rasmus Balzer gets it done. It's pretty crazy because... In my mind, Balzer, you know, I feel like I can remember his first win, you know, within la the last year, you know, year or two. And it's like to for someone to come out and just kind of knock off enough enough of those wins so fast uh, is pretty impressive. So, I mean, I know a lot of people there. There's normally a lot of parity in the 250 class. And then when you do win a title or two, you kind of move out. So. It makes sense uh, seeing the names on those lists uh, that I see. Russ Chapman, Isaiah Dickerson, Seabolt, uh, guys like that, you know, that kind of might have won a lot and got out. Like Seth Shirley only has eight, which in my mind, I would have bet a million bucks that he was more than Balzer. So uh, just really impressive for him to rack up so many wins so fast. And he's still got so many races still left in this championship. So even if he does move up at the end of the year, he's got a, a couple more races Um you know, to kind of establish himself as the all-time uh, race winner in the 250 class. Yeah, I mean, what's crazy about that all-time wins list is it's a pretty dang old record. And we talk about Tyson Fresquez's uh, career wins in the 450 class. That could be another record that's broken this year by Brayden Carter. But Jeremy Smith won these titles in 2014. We're talking about 10 years ago that he set this all-time record in the 250 class. So can Rasmus Balzer add his name atop that sheet? 
We'll find out here tonight in about 12 minutes time. Here we go. Final 250 race of the night. We didn't pick a design Seth lap pole whole shot winner. I got Seth Crotty. You got Seth Carr. Rasmus Balzer is trying to win his 10th 250 main event and get the points lead back. Here we go. Final main is underway in the 250s. Balzer's got a great start. Let's see if he controls it to the inside. I think he will. He's side by side with Partolo, but it's Balzer with the whole shot this time through. And I think that was Padani who spun around in second. Whoa, that was really tight with D-Mills going the opposite way. And to the race lead goes Partolo for the time being. Balzer almost lands on his rear tire. Partolo goes over quad. Balls are trying to take the lead, doubling to the inside, but Partolo's out front on the 52. Yeah, Partolo is moving right now. Sometimes you haven't been up there in a little while, and you get a good start, and you just make the moves as quick as possible to get up there. And Partolo is absolutely ripping right now. We'll see how long he can hang on to this. I do think I saw Seth Carr go down on the start straight, and then we did see another crash uh, go down. Um with Johnny Padani in that first rhythm section. White Drizzle also not up there. So that's going to be something to keep an eye on. Uh, Padani in 12th position right now. And all we said was Balzer needs to beat Padani by three positions to be able to take home and tie that uh, all-time wins record in the 250 Supercross class. And look at that. He's up front. Uh, it might be behind Partolo, but he's way ahead of the rest of the guys that he's been battling for this overall. Yeah, balls are currently, as it runs, seven points up for the overall win here tonight, trying to double through that inside and make the pass on his teammate Parlo. Parlo misses the rhythm and oh, balls are almost comes together with him. No one else actually gained time right there, which is really odd to see that battle. Gummison going at it with Tom Quino in a battle for third and Quino cuts across absolutely That's lays himself out instead of knocking time. Gummison down and Gummison has to go up and over the wall jump a lot of riders just went by in that situation back to the lead battle because Balzer's all over Partolo yeah, man, that's wild. Oh, Partolo, oh, Partolo or maybe down. two all over Partolo because Partolo didn't bring his whip back or something, landed on the front wheel heavy, and uh, balls are into him, was able to get himself free from the bike a little bit faster. Partolo still in second place. Just like that, though, around Vanderbeek. the outside is Vanderbeek as he triples in and gets a nice little gap already, and so he's going to be trying to push forward and put some pressure on um, balls are on himself. Yeah, balls are still going to the outside trying to get that triple in, and now the fight for second is hot and heavy. Yeah, Vanderbeek D Mills is moving in the quad. Yeah, third. D Mills side by side with Partolo. Partolo trying to jump back by Vanderbeek. McIntosh. And the 35 of McIntosh also in there going down the inside in that corner to cut the line off on D Mills and make a beautiful pass into fourth place. That's how you do it, not how Quino did it. As D Mills, <laughs> oh my gosh, D Mills so exit stage right and took McIntosh with him. Now McIntosh flopping like a dead fish on the ground over here as he gets up. And now Joey Carter, he's got Seth Carr right behind him. But Donnie went by these guys. I think this is now seventh for the 26 ride, but Balzer's leading, so Padani has to try to get all the way up to third to make this thing go back in his favor. He is two points off right now. Is actually sixth place that he's moved up to, or fifth? Yeah, fifth now for Padani, so continuing to charge forward. Needs a few more positions, though, to help out his cause. So uh, the, if, he, if he gets uh, third and they tie... Tiebreaker's the final moto. Final moto, so Balzer wins anyways, yep. so... He actually has to get to second. Well, no, he was three points up. So if he's fourth, they tie. Third wins. He was three points up on Balzer. So uh, if it's a, yeah, if he gets three points and Balzer gets a one, that's a two-point split. So Partolo so second. third or second is good. Vanderbeek third, D-Mills fourth, and here comes Johnny Padani in fifth. So this would be a battle for the overall win if he can get around these two guys ahead of him. D-Mills just wants to make a pass on Vanderbeek to get on a podium spot in this moto. And Partolo playing defense for Balzer up ahead of him. This is such an interesting dynamic as we're not even halfway through this final main event of the night. Yeah, it's about time D Mills has showed some speed here, uh, but we'll see. Hopefully he doesn't throw it away. He's been riding so well and he's got so much speed. I was assuming he would be a three to five guy, you know, kind of consistently in this class, but really hasn't done that. Shoot, barely even a top 10 guy at times. So. Good to see him riding good up here and chasing down Vanderbeek. Uh, he was really close to Vanderbeek and McIntosh when he almost went down the first time in the whoops. See if they can both get through cleanly. Nice triple triples from all of them hugging that inside. So not really gaining too much of an advantage. And this battle is actually tightening up a little bit more. We got riders in front and riders right behind. Yeah, Partolo, Vanderbeek, Mills, Padani, 
two, three, four, five on your screen. They're all still chasing Rasmus Balzers. Padani almost went through the front door. I feel like Balzers sorry, checked, no, Parlo too. almost went through the front door, I should say. And yeah, Balzer is checking out. So this is really, oh, D-Mail's almost landed on Vanderbeek, who is short. Padani is just hoping not to get collected if these guys get together because he does not want to be involved in this mess whatsoever. Checks up to go on off behind Daniel Mills, who tripled on. Oh, Partolo down the inside, side by side there with Vanderbeek almost coming together. Look at this four-way fight for second place right now. And Padani is just like, please let me go by. Yeah, battle of the KTNs right now. And Padani, I mean, yeah, he's got a little more speed as far as what we saw with Ooh. lap time stuff. Oh, Partlow pushing Vanderbeek out. Able to let the other two riders by. Vanderbeek stays on his bike, though. But, man, that was just a statement by Partlow saying, I have the inside line. Now I'm going to get it no matter what. And just kind of nudges him over. Nothing too crazy, but surprised he didn't break a collarbone there. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. So, Balzer's checked by 8.3 seconds, and Partolo is doing the teammate's job right here for sure. De defensive riding, not allowing these guys to go by. Look at that inside line for Padani into third. That's for the overall win as he gets around D-Mills. Let's see what D-Mills does to fight back. Does he triple to the inside right here? Uh, he checks in behind him, and Padani kind of shorted that triple, but it did not go too bad as they go up and over that qua or that uh, uh, wall jump right there, I should say. So now as they jump through the whoops, oh, Partolo a mistake. This is going to be trouble for Padani because he's going to have to pass Partolo as Partolo continues to kind of slow the pace down. And he is now in a spot where he is winning the overall by one point in this battle of five versus six points right now as it runs. Padani trying to get around. Partolo is going to go triple, triple to the inside to make this pass. And he set it up perfectly to make that pass. Partolo under the back of him and down. That's a huge win right there for Padani to get away from the 52. Yeah, that was absolutely huge right there. That bull turn just jumping to the inside. He needed to make a pass, but he needed to make it with a statement because Partolo, we saw the way he was with Vanderbeek, does not want to give up that position easily. But Padani didn't have to get it, but really truly should get it for the clear air and was able to make it happen. D Mills, though, looking spicy right now because he looked like his speed was nowhere near close. But uh, I don't know what happened through the last couple corners. He looks like he's been trying to actually make a pass. And uh, he doesn't care about your championship points or your overall. He's trying to get the best finish that he can get. So he really knows he's a past race winner. It's won Daytona before. And I think maybe one other round. But D-Mills is trying to get up there and show these guys that he's what he's got. And maybe uh, play spoiler a little bit in the rest of the series. Yeah, so right now it's a three-second gap back to fourth for Padani. That is a position he does not need to fall back to. If he gets third, he's still good. Second, obviously, things are going right in his favor. Still going for that double line, and things are working out pretty cleanly so far coming down to the final two minutes of this race. Rasmus Balzer, not really sure what he's uh, hearing about in the uh, Discord chat right now about what's going on behind him, but maybe he doesn't care. He's just cruising out front trying to put in a great final race and win this thing. Oh, Padani just made a mistake at the end of the whoops. D Mills goes by him. Padani is going to have to settle in behind him. And Mills up into second. Padani loses a little bit of time. Here comes Vanderbeek. Here comes Seth Carr also trying to get up into the mix. And maybe to play spoiler in this overall win potentially for Padani tonight. Yeah, see, the thing is that there's a couple riders down. I don't think that was anyone in the battle that just went down on the Yamaha. No, Vanderbeek is in fourth, so he's the next kind of person you got to watch out for. But Padani is now on the very last position that he can secure this overall with. So that is why we are keeping an eye on this right here because one more little mistake right there, and Ooh. maybe he loses a position as he frames the triple right there. Can't do it. Look at this. Vanderbeek's going to get close. And this is exactly what Padani does not want. Yeah, he wanted to have clean air in front of D-Mills and not have to battle him or deal with the pressure from Maxime Vanderbeek. So through the whoops we go. We're coming down to the final minute of this. And this is for the overall win. Vanderbeek, not a factor even for a podium at the moment, but he could change the entire overall winner's score if he gets around Johnny Padani to take over third place in this race. It is a one-point advantage for Padani. If he loses this spot, it would be tied, and he Whoa. misses the rhythm section right here. Vanderbeek cuts across oh. and takes over the position. Maxime Vanderbeek into third. Padani has to respond. I think they hit right there too when they were kind of coming across it looked like Padani's uh, bike got unsettled the way it would if someone barely kind of hit you 
but they both stayed up. Look at Padani now. You can tell he's pushing, oh. doing his inside step on, step offline, which he has been doing all, all the time, but uh, pushing just a little bit too wide there. Padani has now pressure from Karu, who's one of the fastest guys on the track at all times right behind him. So not only does he have to get away from him, but he has to get up and make a pass back on Vanderbeek. Oh, that's going to help him because Karu just made a mistake. He's going to cut the track and be right on him still, but that's huge penalties there for Karu, as we saw for Jacob Hubbard in the last race as well. So the battle continues. Two laps to go. Johnny Padani. Is that Mills? Is that Mills down? God it is Daniel it, Mills, Mills, Mills down. So Daniel Mills goes down out of second. Padani's still not tripling. And he barrel rolls and goes down. He got landed on by Seth Carr. Who gets through first? Is D that Mills. Twalik going by? And Twalik. No, D Mills. D Mills Twalik goes must through. be lapped. McIntosh goes by. Carr picks it up in front of Padani. I don't know why Padani has not been able to hit that triple out of the inside line consistently but it bites him again as car lands on him and these guys still going at it mcintosh through the tough blocks so uh, it's going to be mills moving back to third car side by side with padani going back into fourth he's got to go get d mills up the road as the white flag is going to wave this time by Honestly, Padani gained so much more time back there than I thought. I thought this was instantly out, but looking at who we've got in front of him and the amount of race time left, there is still a chance, especially as we get more into lappers. lappers Padani has... Lappers got to get out of the way. That's Will check, and oh! Padani slides out. He slides out, and through goes McIntosh and Seth Carr. That's massive because he had to get D-Mills, and those guys in front of him will prevent him from getting up there. Mills, one lap to go, is looking like he's going to hold on to third, and Balzer is going to sneak this win away by just cruising out front and letting the chaos go on behind him. Through the whoops, one more time, Balzer jumps in. He's going to be A-OK, -okay, it looks like, unless a big mistake on this final corner. It's still Vanderbeek, Mills, Carr, McIntosh, and then Padani, who is way back here now. Look at this, folks. Balzer takes the win in main three. We'll wait to call it until these guys cross the line. Maxime Vanderbeek is going to come through and pick up second in this race. Daniel Mills is going to pick up third unless something else happens in this final corner, but that will solidify it. Rasmus Balzer is a 10-time 250 Supercross winner. He matches the all-time record. Seth Carr, Rogan McIntosh, and then Johnny Badani, who instant disconnects across the line in sixth place. That is just absolute heartbreak for Padani. I wonder what happened... There must have been within those last two laps something happened with that out that rut leaving the sand section because he got unsettled both times and that's the first time he wasn't able to make the triple completely missed it um, and got past and then that time he got a big kick still tried to go for it and messed up the rhythm on his own just a real bummer there man the way that the this erode can affect the races some guys it doesn't really affect and sometimes just one rut one line comes out and with two laps to go just completely uh upsets him and man just like that balls are tying the record for 250 wins is absolutely crazy but that's an amazing stat and congratulations to him on that and the win Wow, unbelievable. Rasmus Balzer, he retakes the championship lead as well with that. So unofficially, it is Rasmus Balzer by two points over Johnny Padani. Seth Carr on 13 points gets third overall on the night. So actually a pretty good salvage ride overall for him to uh, not retain the points lead, but still, I believe, only be four points down of Balzer. Rogan McIntosh gets fourth overall and Maxime Vanderbeek ends up getting fifth overall on the night. What a 250 main event that was uh, to cap off that overall standing. Now it's on to the 450s and Braden Castellaneta and Jacob Hubbard, really it's down to the two of them. Four points for Castellaneta, five points for Hubbard, 11 points. Alexis Leclerc is on 11 points with a 7-4 and has an outside chance at winning this thing from fifth place in the LCQ, which is crazy. But uh, yeah, Castellaneta <clears throat> versus Hubbard, who we got? <sighs> I mean, cast another with the raw speed, but Hubbard, you know, he's going to he's going to get the start and he really showed us something in that second race. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, I'm going to I'm going to try to go with Castaneda. I think it would be a cool story for him to, to knock out another uh, fastest qualifier, um, you know, and just kind of get that first win and, and, you know, just go. What, what would it be? One. What's he at? One, three. What? 
one three. If he can go one three one, I just think would be cool after almost a perfect night. You know, a couple mishaps, but to be able to come, get back up after getting knocked down in that second race, uh, I think would be really cool for Castaneda. Yeah, but well, I do think I'm still going to pick uh, Hubbard as my whole shot. Oh, still picking Hubbard. Try to for go the whole four shot? for six. All right. Um, just because I think he needs it to win tonight, I'm going to pick Alexis Leclerc. If he can win this final race, he would have a shot at winning the overall. Brayden Carter won the second main event, but he's on 17 points. He does have an outside shot at a podium based on how things have kind of split the overalls behind him here tonight. Uh, but things definitely have not gone his way so far because of that first main event really throwing him off. Final race of the night coming up. We have got the Design Lab Co. whole shot one more time. You've got Jacob Hubbard again. I've got Alexis LeClaire again. And we have got a barn burner of a final main event coming up. Hubbard versus Castellaneta mixing it up for the overall win here in Indianapolis. Yeah, I mean, we've seen some great racing, man. And it's just uh, the Triple Crowns. They're not... That's so big. There's not a... I don't, I don't know if they're necessarily, like, not my favorite. They're not really my favorite in real life, but I do think we get some amazing racing uh, in sim. You know, there's so much kind of uh, parity between the guys. Uh, starts are a little less consistent than people can be, besides Hubbard, uh, in real life. And I don't know. It's just fun to see three times the action, you know, with all the main guys on the main stage here uh, when we get to talk about it on Wednesdays. Well, this is what you guys all come to see. The final round showdown of the Triple Crown. One point in it between Brayden Castellaneta and Jacob Hubbard for the overall win. But anybody could win this final main event, and it would not be a shock to the system. One more time tonight, who is going to get the Design Lab Co. hole shot? 30 card goes sideways. Revs go up. Let's find out who's the winner tonight in Indianapolis. Here we go. It's LeClaire and Hubbard side by side, but actually I think that was Rogers who pushed a little bit out. And Hubbard, three for three on Design Lab Co. Whole shot wins tonight. He's going to lead into the second corner. He's got Carter right there. Uh, that is Tanner Rogers on the 55 also in the mix. So this is huge for Hubbard to get out front. Castellaneta looks like he's in about sixth or seventh on the opening lap here as they all chase a 78. Yeah, I mean, what a great start again by Hubbard. Three for three is just absolutely insane. That guy knows something that the rest of us don't. But Braden Carter, once again, up close pressuring. Can he make an early pass and get away with this? I honestly think it might be in uh, benefit to Hubbard to let Braden Carter by. And not that he's doing that going outside there because, yeah, he's going to try to hold on to it. Uh, I do think Carter just made that move mostly on his own, but I think it benefits Hubbard to get in there, try to knock off some fast lap times with your buddy and kind of get away. And I do think that's what he needs to be Castellaneta here tonight. Well, Castellaneta is already up to fourth and Leclerc, the other man kind of in this picture is in third. So Carter is just laying waste to the field here in these second and third main events. He's by Hubbard and he's already starting to inch a gap out a little bit. There is Leclerc in the two spot and then Castellaneta, or sorry, in the three spot and Castellaneta in the four spot. So we saw Castellaneta have the raw speed in that first main event to run down and pass Hubbard, go on to take the win. Now can he do it again in this final race? He's going to have to do it to win the overall here tonight as those guys continue to get away. It's a Filski and Snowboard one, two, three, four, and then Eaglin bringing up the top five positions off the start of this one. But all eyes on Castellaneta as he tries to close this gap down. Yeah, a good ride uh, by Eaglin being the first non-Fills rider up here. And he's he's been the one that's also been kind of in the championship hunt, you know, that's uh, kind of up around there in points. So he's still battling for something too. He might not have had the best night tonight over these first two races, but definitely trying to make something happen. Well, on board with Castaneda here. Let's let's watch him. Ooh, as he frames a triple hard. You say let's watch what he elects to do here in this long rhythm. Most of the 450s are going outside triple on just because it is easier and they can quad off that five footer right there. Yep. Um, so it does kind of make that a little bit one line, but there are some guys going inside doing a couple different things. Um, but he hit, has loved that big quad line too because not everyone is hitting it. Yeah, seems like, ooh, Castellaneta just got sideways. The fight for second is on. Leclerc is all over Hubbard. And uh, these two, I don't believe, normally hang out in a call and talk to each other. So, again, maybe a situation if you're Hubbard, don't even mess with them because it's not for the overall win if Leclerc goes by you. And if you get a little bit of clean air and not have to deal with him, 
uh, battling and pressuring you, maybe it helps you out in your quest to beat Castellaneta here tonight. So you lose a point if he lets Leclerc go. They would be tied overall on points, but it would help him maybe get this overall win. Castellaneta's still lurking back there, though. I feel like Leclerc is making Hubbard work a little extra in this second position. I was going to say, Hubbard, uh, if... If Castaneda wasn't so close, I think he would let him by or keep taking outside smooth lines and just kind of doing your own thing. If he gets by or starts showing a nose, just let him go. But he's actually still pushing because you don't want to be, when you're one Whoa. point away from someone, you don't want to give away and be that one spot away because then it's do or die. You make one mistake, it's over. Now with uh, Leclerc behind him, who did get past him for a second on the inside, uh, not able to make it work just because of how slow it is, but... Yeah, I mean, you got to keep an eye on him. I think he's going to try to stay smooth and stay ahead of Leclerc, even if it might be a little more nerve-wracking. Yeah, all right. So we saw that inside line that Leclerc took in that last corner. That's the first time I've really seen somebody Ooh, try that, and inside. it kind of almost worked. And then Leclerc tripling from the inside right there. He's going to land slightly off the track, able to still triple on to the inside and keep it close. But Hubbard uh, keeping that gap steady, at least for the time being. Castellaneta's losing ground on this gr on this battle, so perhaps being in the fight with Leclerc is keeping Hubbard a little bit sharper right now. As oh, Leclerc cuts across and absolutely oh. lays Hubbard down. Massive crash for the 78. And just as we were talking about, maybe you let him go so you don't even have to deal with that. Hubbard gets absolutely sent and is now trying to pick it back up and get going again. He is probably fuming. Yeah, he still had that front end lock right there. You saw him tip over all on his own from coming through those bales or something and then lost a couple more seconds. But man, that is what happens. You see him going, flying, flipping through the air, and that's what happens. Uh, this game has gotten a lot better with the lag from, uh, from over here in the U.S. of A all the way to France. And man, you just get a little bit more of the game trying to figure out what's going on. And that's why he got flung so hard instead of just kind of getting dropping to the ground. So... Hubbard, honestly, I think it'll be a huge statement if he can regroup himself and start knocking off some positions and getting back up there towards the front of this pack. Yeah, fighting with Anthony Pachone right there, and that was uh, real tight in that pass. As So Jack Haley, you got Tanner Rogers up here. T-Lang went by, and then Castellaneta, who is still right behind Leclerc. Carter gone in the background out front. And really now what it comes down to is Castellaneta staying on two wheels and how much that affects what Jacob Hubbard is able to accomplish behind him. Because Hubbard still about eight seconds off of Castellaneta as it runs right now. But you never know, man. A crash out of Castellaneta changes this entire race. So I was drinking right when you passed it to me. Yeah, because that really the battle is only between those two because third place is... Uh Leclerc with 11 points, but these guys have four and five. So there's got to be a huge gap between one of these two and Leclerc for them to take it over. And since Leclerc is kind of up front and they haven't really been dropping too far back, I really do think it's it's a tale of these two guys, right? Something crazy could happen if they both ended up dropping, uh, you know, all the way back to like, to like ninth and 10th. But I don't really see that happening. I do think they stay a little bit higher, but yeah. Castellaneta is all we really need to keep an eye Ooh. on. And there's a close call there casing that triple. One fall from him, and it's now a new race, basically. And it's just kind of mano y mano again. So it is Castellaneta laying Rogers. What happened to Hubbard? He is starting to fall apart a little bit, and it's gone from bad to worse. He is now ninth in this race. Man, it was all there for the taking, and then Leclerc just took it all away from him. And, uh, yeah, I mean, just getting a little bit closer to Hubbard as I have of late man I just know how he's going to react to that it's not going to be uh, a feel-good emotion whatsoever he's going to be livid and when you ride a little bit pissed off it's tough to regroup after a situation like that so uh, curious what he's going to have to say about this afterwards because I don't think it's going to be too many nice words for the seven machine yeah I mean uh oh Hubbard getting all sorts of out of shape right there he is still able to keep it clean he has been going outside there but yeah, you saw it with Braden Carter in the first race and Braden kind of got into a crash. It might have been his fault and then, you know, uh, or it might have or have not been his fault. But then once you're down, if you make another mistake again, it's all about keeping a cool head and he was never able to bring it up past like 17th. So Jacob Hubbard right here is in ninth place battling with a rider who's probably a little bit slower than him. And uh, sorry for Zaka. Yeah, but, call him out. But it's true, Kevin from Zaka riding great in eighth place. But honestly, you haven't been up there as far. I think for Zaka got a fourth place earlier, 
But Hubbard has been one, two, uh, one, two, three for the most part today. So he wants to get by, but the longer it takes him, the more frustrated he's going to be. Yeah, so he's just going to try to make as much damage as he can through the field. For Zaka, Hayden Stevenson, Anthony Pichon, oh. Tanner Rogers, Tyler Lang, and then Castellaneta. I mean, it's it's a tall task. I think this is Castellaneta's to lose at this point. Actually, Leclerc, because of all this chaos, has moved up into second overall on 13 points. If Castellaneta gets around Leclerc, it does help Hubbard's case a little bit to maybe still get second overall here tonight. But I don't think Castellaneta cares about that. I think for him, it's just do what uh, Hubbard maybe could have done at the start of this one, settle in, don't try to mess with Leclerc, don't get into a fight you don't need to, and hang on for this third spot. Yeah, Braden is exactly where he needs to be. Hubbard is the only one who can really help himself. One thing I did want to notice and also shout out was uh, when we were moving up through that top 10 right there, checking out who's in between ooh, Leclerc. Uh, Leclerc and who he might not lose the spot to Castaneda, just not yet. But we did have two of our qualifiers from our LCQ running within the top 10 of this race, and that was Stevenson and Pachon. So really cool for them to kind of have a good third moto, and they maybe finally figured out the track a little bit. Yep, so Leclerc, man, just like in this dogfight with Castellaneta, but it's not even so much of a battle as it's just Castellaneta not trying to run into Leclerc making mistakes as a 10 second lead still for Brayden Carter. He's got this thing about sewn up. So it's Castellaneta, Leclerc, Hubbard, Lang, Carter, the top five overall as it runs. We'll see if anything else changes. Hubbard is into the eighth spot, but he's still behind Hayden Stevenson trying to close that gap down. Yeah, I think Castellaneta is just trying to bring this thing home in the final two minutes of this race. Let's go back out to our leader because we haven't talked about him nearly at all watching this fight for the overall win. But man, He's Braden Carter showing us what could have been had the first main been a little bit different. If he doesn't crash early in that one in that fight for third place, maybe he doesn't finish 16th and maybe he is on his way to another huge win here in Indianapolis. Instead, he's going to settle for a so-so result because of that 16th in the first moto. But either way, the points gap is still massive. Yeah, I mean... Uh he hasn't really shocked me too far this race as far as how much he's pulled away, but maybe it's maybe it's uh, Leclerc and some of his his rivals getting good starts up there with him and just uh, everyone's feeling the flow on this track. But yeah, it could have been another really dominant, boring race from Braden Carter with a 1-1-1, but uh, you know, one race out there where he had a huge blow up and he wasn't able to make it happen and uh, allows us to see at least a different overall winner. But man, the fact that he can just come back out and do this is pretty pretty awesome to watch it's uh it's just impressive at this point yeah i mean it's it's Braden carter we're at this point now where he is walking ever so closer to the all-time 450 supercross wins record he's on the doorstep of being the first ever four-time repeat champion in the game and the second ever four-time 450 supercross champion in the game and it's all it's all carter man it's he's got this thing in his back pocket if he so chooses oh, oh! Castellaneta is down out of third through the bars he goes it's going to be Lang going by for third got a rider getting up right there and now that is Castellaneta fourth here is Rogers battling with Holsey a lap down then Stevenson and then Hubbard so still pretty big gap but that is something of note a little late mistake there for Castellaneta he can't afford another one yeah he uh it's, it's crazy to see because he kind of did that all on his own. I thought that if there were more riders, he would have trouble getting back on track because where he fell on the inside of that inside rut uh, after that whoop section. But we'll see how much this shake thing, shakes things up. And now we have to think, put ourselves inside Braden Castellaneta's head. And if he's now worried because someone's telling him he has the overall on math, but he just fell Ooh. and he's not out of it yet. But yeah, maybe we'll see him unsettled these next couple laps or will he be able to get back comfortable and start uh, clicking off his laps again and not even worry about it. White flag out, and they just clipped the timer. I mean, they were about two seconds past the 12-minute mark when uh, timing and scoring flipped over and the white flag came out. So that's huge for Castellaneta. Doesn't huge. have to do two more laps, just one more lap around this racetrack to get it done. And, uh, yeah, Hubbard has fallen even further back by the looks of it. Oh, yeah, he's wow. down again. So it's... It's all falling apart at this point. It's all Castellaneta to bring this thing home and win his second ever 450 main event, his first ever overall at a Triple Crown. It's all going to be this man in the final main event, though. Braden Carter has got it done. 
We talked about the potential of him spoiling the results here by a couple wins after his 16th in the first moto, and he does just that. 16-1-1 performance. Braden Carter takes main three in Indianapolis. Alexis LeClaire looks like he'll pick up second overall with this result, a second there in that uh, final night, uh, final race of the night, I should say. Lang ends up third in this one, and your winner here tonight, Braden Castellaneta. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. He just missed the Did finish he miss line. The finish? Yeah. He's got to come back, but he will solidify with a fifth place result going backwards over the finish line jump. Braden Castellaneta, a two time Moto Option Supercross winner. Wow, that was crazy because I saw him go through the black box. They build the terrain out there, but he rode through that uh, statue that we see for the finish line structure. And yeah, surprising to see it not pick that up. Timing gates are tight right there, able to come around and get it. But man, I bet you Hubbard's wishing at that point that he was just that little bit closer because how long did it take him to get across, turn around, and know he made it or he missed it, you know? Just a huge a collapse after three hole shots for Hubbard. He is going to miss out on the race win and probably actually miss out on the full podium, right? Will, so we yeah. got Leclerc and Lang on the podium. And Castaneda went from... Uh, or Hubbard went from hero to zero right there with like two laps to go in that main, and that's just a complete heartbreak for him. Tough break for sure, but Brayden Castellaneta does pick up the win. Nine points for him. Alexis DeClaire on 13. Tyler Lang on 15 is your podium in Indianapolis. Jacob Hubbard on 16 points gets fourth, and Brayden Carter rounds out the top five on 18 points. Devin Davis, Colby Eagland, Logan Leitzel, Kevin Ferzaka, and Tanner Rogers was the rest of the top 10. Behind that, D. Davis with a sixth overall on the night. Great drive. Uh, great job tonight for him. Goes 12 5 7 for six. That's a pretty solid night overall. All right, so that is going to do it for us here in Indianapolis. What a night of racing. We saw a record breaking performance in the 250 main event. Rasmus Balzer ties the all time 250 wins record. And then Braden Castellaneta, his second win of the season, second career win as well, picking up his first ever Triple Crown win. Wow. Crazy night of racing. These Triple Crowns, man, they just provide the goods every single time. Yeah, I mean, and it's it's cool to see it kind of came down to multiple guys each time. Um, it wasn't that one person had a big lead, you know, and we're battling for second or third. So really happy that we got to see that kind of play out. Um, bummer that we didn't get, get it down to the last lap of the last 450 race, but we can't be really that spoiled. Um, these guys have given us enough entertainment tonight through the LCQs and through the uh, every single race that we saw tonight. It was awesome battling, awesome racing, difficult track, but pretty fun and yeah, ready for ready for the next round. Yep, ready for the next round indeed. We'll be heading west for the next round all the way out to Seattle as we see the 250 West boys get back into action as well and that fun championship fight that we've seen uh, already do five rounds, I think, of their championship. The sixth round of Seattle coming up next week and the 12th round uh, or 11th round of Moto Option Supercross from Seattle next week as well. This has been the Indianapolis MX Simulator Supercross Triple Crown event. Kellen Brower, Andrew Wood in the booth. Thank you guys so much for joining us for the 10th round of Moto Option Supercross. Big shout out to Race Factor Gaming and the Race Factor Gaming track crew for another fun night of racing and fun racetrack for us to cover all the action. We'll be back same time, same place next Wednesday night to cover all the action in Seattle. But for us here at Start Your Systems and everyone behind the scenes that puts it all together, thank you guys for tuning in and we'll see you next week. So long for now. <laughs>